Check, check. Test one. Test, check, test, check. Test one, check. Test one, check, check, test one. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in for uh, another evening of basketball, our last home game against the Overton Eagles from south of SEM Public Schools. You can see the JV boys warming up. We will not have a JV girls game tonight as the numbers are too low. Um, but we will have two quarters of JV boys action followed by varsity girls and varsity boys. It was seniors night for both the boys and girls teams, and eSports parents night will take place at halftime of the girls varsity game. So stay tuned for all of that. I don't know who's going to run the camera and the microphone during the eSports parents night since I'm an eSports parent coach and my son is uh, on the eSports team. So we'll just aim it somewhere down in the middle and hope it gets it. So a couple... Um, Short things to read about the seniors. There's one senior for the boys, two seniors for the girls. So both of these SEM Mustang teams are very young. But uh, we got about 14 minutes to go here in the warm up of the JV game. It'll be a quick game. The game is going to start right there at uh, 5 o'clock sharp. Girls varsity action set to tip off somewhere around 5.45 or 6 o'clock, depending on how long these two quarters of boys JV go. With the impending weather coming in, we want to try to get these games in as fast as possible. So as soon as this JV boys game is over, they'll start the warm-up for the girls game and then play that varsity girls game. Immediately following the girls game, they'll warm up and do the boys game. They're not going to wait until it's uh, tip-off time or for the uh, 7.30 start time, let's say, for the boys. They'll just run it right after the girls varsity game is over. The junior varsity players that are listed for the Overton Eagles are Caden Lux, number 10, the 5'10 sophomore, number 20, Brendan McCarter, a six foot freshman, number 22, Creighton Elfgren, a 5'5 freshman, and number 24, Connor Shively, a 5'11 sophomore. Obviously, they'll be pulling some players from their varsity roster as well. Um, Overton with a few more boys than the Mustangs. The Mustangs are Pretty short this season, and with injuries and um, sickness and stuff, they've been kind of shorthanded all year, but they've been competing well. They've got a 8-7 and seven record, and they're 15th in the state in Class D2, so they need a win here def uh, definitely to secure a good spot for the sub-districts. The girls are seated first place in our sub-districts and they will take on Brady in the first round of the sub-district playoffs on Tuesday.
The roster for the Overton Eagles boys team is, looks like we got Caleb Svarvery, Caden Wallace, Alex Bonzoff, Cody Schubert, Dawson Anderson, Noah Lees, Wyatt Ryan, Braden Flesh Fleischman, Blake Eklund, Wyatt Reebschlager, Max Monzo, Preston Shibley. They get the award for the most difficult last names to pronounce. And of course our roster looks like this. Number 10, Tucker Weitzel. Number 12, Gage Schledowitz. Number 14, Creighton Line. Number 20, Noah Eggleston. Number 22, Colt Schroeder. 24, Jason Goodhart. Number 30, Kellen Eggleston. Number 32, Jace Rosentrader. Number 34, Bart Beattie. Number 40, Ryan Arbuthnot. Number 42, Darren Schroeder. And number 50, Carson Rohde. Mustangs are head coached by Darby Lyon. Assistant coaches, Micah Eggleston and Pastor Ken Hudson. We're just about ready for tip off here in this JV boys game. Remember, we are going only two quarters of action here tonight for the JV boys and no JV girls. And the girls varsity will start immediately following the boys JV game. Eight minute quarters, since we are only playing two quarters, we start in the third quarter. It's like number 33 out there, Blake Eklund to jump. He's a 6'3 sophomore against Gage Schlutowitz. Gage, a six foot junior. And the refs check to make sure the clock's ready and we're underway. All right. Number 21 dribbles down the right side, takes it, double teamed by Barton Colt, gets it out to 24. Swings it over to 20, thought about it at three. Now he gets a nice pass underneath to 41, puts it up and in. That's number 41, Max Monzo, Monzo with his first two of the game. And now the Mustangs have it. Rosen Trader on top, hands it off to Colt. A little man to man action for Overton. Nice dish by Colt to Gage. Misses the shot from the baseline, rebound 21. He dribbles it down. Takes it between two defenders, up and in. Nice little Euro step by Noah Lees. And he scores. Four to zero, Overton. Bart Beatty, nice pass inside to Gage. Takes it up and is fouled. The foul goes on Blake Eklund, his first. That'll send Gage to the line. Had some good passing here early by the Mustang JV team. Mustangs looking to get on the board here with 7.14 to go in the third quarter. And he hits the front end of the two shot foul. And the Mustangs are on the board, score four to one. Second one's up, no good, rebound, bounces around, and we got a foul over the back there on Ryan Arbuthnot. Did a good job to get away with it early but just a little bit too much contact there late. And that'll be his first foul, team's first foul. Noah Lees brings it down, passes it over to the left. It's Brendan McCarter gets it into the middle, and that's number 24 with the jump shot from the elbow. Connor Shibley gets his first two points. Bart Beatty breaks the press down the right side. He goes, takes it all the way in, head fake up, blocked by Eklund. Quite a bit of size difference in that one. He did get him in the air for a second, but not high enough for him to be able to shoot over him. Number 24 for three, he got it. That's Connor Shibley, five points now. Mustangs down nine to one. A minute and a half gone here in the game. Inside to Schledowitz. Schledowitz has it stolen away. A lot of contact on that one. They're letting a lot go. We'll see how the Mustangs adjust their defense based on the way things are being called. Could have had a travel there. Nice pass inside, Ryan Arbuth not on the defense. Get it back out, another one for three. Gets another one, Shibley, his second three-pointer. Gonna have to get a man out on that one. 12 to one the score. Rosentrader brings it down the left side, head fake. 
Gets him in the air, dish to Arbuthnot in the middle. The shot off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound Eklund. Coach calls out Cowboy, and number 21 brings it down the right side. Noah Lees crosses over. He's got Colt on him. Now DeBart kind of double teams. Leaves Shively open, and he travels. He got a head faked and drug a foot. It'll be Mustang's ball out of bounds. On the side, looks like the uh, Eagles are in a man-to-man -man full court defense right now. They pass it in easily to Gage. He's got Eklund on him. Packs it over to Colt. Colt brings it down the left side. Noah Lee's on him. Reverse dribble. He has it knocked away and out of bounds. That'll be Mustang ball off of Lee's. Twelve to one the score. Five thirty-three to go in the quarter. Schroeder gets it in the backcourt. Dribbles around Lee's. Lee's kind of making some contact. Nice pass inside, a little too low though for Ryan. It was a good idea, the pass got through, but your center has to get it down there by his ankles. That makes it kind of tough. If he could have picked it up, he would have been able to score pretty easily underneath. So a little risk reward pass on that one. Lee's backs down Schroeder, takes it all the way in. The shot up, no good. Gets his own rebound, ends up Going out of bounds, Mustang ball. 5-11 to go in the quarter, 12-1 to the score. Mustangs with the, going against the full court press of the Overton Eagles here. They're full court man-to-man. -man. It's not really a press, just a full court man-to-man. -man. Now they do come up for a press. They've got a double team. Dribbles it down the right side. Nice pass inside to Arbuthnot. He's up. Makes it with some contact. Ryan Arbuthnot scores the first field goal for the Mustangs. Okay. Stolen by Colt Schroeder, he gets it away from Lees, takes it all the way in, tries to get it up, he's fouled. Reached across the arm, he did have his hand on the ball, but he had to reach across his arm to make contact to do it. And that'll be Lees for his foul. Send Colt Schroeder to the line for two. 12 to three the score, 446 to go in a quarter. And he gets the first one. Wait. No, line violation, so they take away the point. Number 10 into the game, that's Caden Lux, comes in for Noah. Lees, he'll check out of the game. So after the line violation, he comes back a little bit and he's short, but rebound, Ryan Arbuthnot, offensive rebound, gets it to Gage on the baseline, head fakes, take Eklund, gets it dished back out to Barbiti for three, no good, rebound, far side by Shibley. Shibley gets it up to Lux, who just passed, checked into the game. Back to Shibley, looks inside, and it's knocked away. Colt Schroeder ends up with it, and he starts to bring it down. Lux on him. Nice pass inside to Arbuthnot. He's double teamed. He passes it out to Schledowitz, who takes the nice fadeaway jumper, and he gets it. Gage Schledowitz on the board. He's known to score in these JV games, and timeout, Overton. With 4.10 to go in the quarter, Overton Eagles lead 12 to five over your SEM Mustangs. All right. So as I said before, it's senior night tonight and eSports parents night. That'll happen at halftime of the girls varsity game. Senior night will take uh, place for each girls and boys squad before their starting lineups. All right, so Lux brings it up with McCarter. Going down the court with him. He gets it over to 15, a new player into the game there. That's Dawson Anderson. Stolen away by Schledowitz, gets it up to Beatty, and Beatty moves it down the left side. Anderson on him. He has to pick up his dribble, kind of stuck. Gets it inside to uh, Arbuthnot. Has it just inside the lane. Hesitated, a little double pump, and he got bailed out by a foul. That was Max Monzo. If he would have just let him shoot, I don't think he'd have made it, but he, had made, he made some contact there as he got caught out of position trying to get back in front of Ryan, and it sends Ryan to the line for two. Trying to cut it in the lead in half. And this is the first one. Twelve to five the score. Three forty-six to go. 
Good form up a little short. Rebounded by Eklund, and he's tied up by Gage Schledowitz. Eklund brought it down too fast, and the Mustangs will retain possession. Good job of Gage Schledowitz being aware of the ball coming down. And the 6'3 sophomore, Eklund. Ryan Arbuthnot to inbound, gets it into Bart. Kind of trapped in the corner, is stolen away. And Overton has it now down the right side. Knocked out of bounds by Colt Schroeder. It'll be Eagles ball. Dawson Anderson to inbound to Lees. And he'll dribble it up. Goes left side to Lux. Lux looks at him going through. Looks at Anderson. Now over to Eklund. Back over to Lees. Nice pass inside to Eklund. He has a baseline jumper up. No good. Rebound. Colt Schroeder on the offside. Good job of being in the right place at the right time. Almost loses it. Gets it back. He's looking to get rid of it. Gets it over to Bart. Comes, bails him out. Gets it over to Rosentrader. He drives on the right side. He stops short. Takes the shot over the 6'3 Eklund and drops it. Jace Rosentrader off the bench for his first two. 12 to 6. And Mustang starting to cut into this lead now. Overton hasn't scored in a while. Oh, nice pass. It was a really good pass by Lux to... Max Monzo down low. But he lost control of it down there and Arbuthnot ended up with it. And Monzo fouled him. And so now he'll come out of the game and Brandon McCarter will check in. Six foot freshman for Overton. 2.50 to go in the quarter, 12 to seven. The Mustangs looking to cut it to maybe a three or two-point lead here. They can get a bucket or a three. Arbuthnot gets it into Rosentrader, dribbles it down the right side, waiting for the track. Nothing comes, so he continues to dribble it down. Now the trap comes, and they get the steal. Lee's bringing it down the center. He passes it up court to 20, puts it up and in over Arbuthnot. It's number 20, Brandon McCarter with his first points of the game. Now here comes that full court man-to-man -man slash press. Back over to, they break the timeline there. Ryan passes it over to Jace. Jace dribbling around and loses control of it. It's taken by Shively, no, yeah, by Shively. Takes it all the way down, the shot up, and a foul. That will send McCarter to the line. Fouls on 22, Colt Schroeder his first. Like he took one to the face on that one. 14 to seven, the score, football score. They're looking to add to that lead now with this first shot. It's up and good. Right. And now the second shot, 2.14 to go in the quarter. And he gets both of them. Mustangs break the press. Now he has it at the timeline. Has it gone over the timeline, though? They got through it. They got a chance to reset. Jace dribbles through it. Has it down on the baseline. Over to Ryan. Ryan dishes over to Gage. Good pass. And the hoop. Oh, he doesn't quite get the three-point play opportunity, but he's fouled as he went up. That ball bounced around quite a while before it went out. And that'll send Gage Sledowitz to the line for two. So Overton scored a couple quick buckets. And now they're back up to that nine point lead. Until then, where Gage hit his first one. Lux out of the game. Wyan Riepschlager back into the game for, oh, that's his first action for the Eagles. Just under two minutes to go in the quarter. Second one's up, off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound, Monson, Monzo. Gets it over to Lees, brings it down the left side. Over to McCarter, tries to pass it inside, stolen. Darren Schroeder ends up with it. His first action of the night. Passes it over to Colt, Colt brings it up. Mike Eggleston, uh, coach of the Mustangs for the JV game. A whole pile of kids on the floor with Schledowitz and Monzo tying it up. That's the second time Schlettowitz has been in on one of those tie-ups. So this one will go possession arrow to the Eagles. And now a full court press by the Mustangs. So they're going to come out. Schroeder not quite sure where he's going there. 
They break the press. Number 20 takes it all the way down, travels before the shot. And he, he knew it before the ref did. Substitution into the game. Bart Beatty comes in for Darren Schroeder. 128 to go in the quarter and 16 to 8. The Eagles have the Mustangs doubled up. Here just about halfway through the game. Travel on Colt Schroeder. Turnover. Ball turns back over to the Eagles. Wyatt inbounds it to Noah. Noah crosses the half court line. He's got Jace Rosentrader tied up on him. Passes it back over there to McCarter. Gets it inside to Monzo. Nice pass inside. Gets the hoop and the harm. Got that from the pass by Monzo. Great pass to Wyatt Riebschlager. They'll send him to the line. Foul on Schledowitz, his first. Team's third. The team fouls can't be right. It says they have 10, but there's no way. Misses the free throw. And down come the Mustangs. Ryan Arbuthnot at the free throw line. Nice pass over to Schledowitz, up and in. Great look by Ryan Arbuthnot as the double team came and he dished it off to Schledowitz, who now has six points. And almost has it stolen. Jace Rosentrader putting the pressure on Noah Lees. He takes it up, though, now after he missed it to the elbow. The shot no good. Rebound by Overton. That shot's no good. Rebounded Overton again. This one's up and in. I believe that was Brandon McCarter. I'm going to give it to him. I couldn't quite tell which Overton Eagle got that offensive rebound and put back in that pile of bodies. Stolen by Noah Lees. Gets it over. Oh, ball's on the ground. Pile of bodies down there again. And we got a timeout first before. It looks like by Coach Eggleston will retain the possession for the Mustangs instead of a jump ball. So with 13.5 seconds to go. In the third quarter, the Mustangs trail the Overton Eagles 22-10 in the JV boys action. Remember, there's only two quarters of this game, so we're starting in the third. Fourth quarter will be next, and then they'll start right into the girls' varsity warm-ups. It is senior night. We'll be announcing the seniors at the right before the starting lineups of both the girls' and the boys' game. Esports Parents Night. That'll take place at halftime of the girls' varsity game, somewhere around 6 o'clock, 6.15, I would guess that would take place. Of course, that all depends on how the game is played. So let's see if the Mustangs can get a bucket here before the end of the quarter. 13 and a half seconds to go. Arbuthnot to inbound. A 1-3-1 one, one press by the Overton Eagles here, full court. 10 seconds, and get it left side. Hold, just about to the timeline now. Now he passes it deep to Schro or, uh, Schledowitz, passes under to Beattie, loses control of it, and that will end the quarter. So after one quarter of our two-quarter game, Overton Eagles lead the Mustangs 20 to 10. Like to thank some of our Sumner Edigo Miller Scholars Scholarship supporters. At the platinum level, the $500 level, we have Apache Ag LLC of Sumner, Bowie Fertilizer of Miller, Five Points Bank of Sumner, McFarland Seed, Lexington, Pisaka Baker and McFarland of Lexington. At the gold level, the $200 to $500 level, Beatty Family Farms of Sumner, Eggleston Oil of Ocano, and Capital Electric from Sumner. The silver level, $100 to 250. Clark Gladder Farms, Cuts on the Creek. Irwin Painting, O'Neill Family Farms. Ryder Angus, Rockin' H Ranch. Tubbs Pub, Linda Berman in memory of Gary Berman. Jason and Danny Eggleston family in memory of Colton Eggleston. The Rhodey Felker Memorial, Don and Martha Newquist, and Bryce and Diana Williams. Oh, and Bill and Megan Schmidt. We'll come back to uh, the Colton fundraiser that's happening tonight after this game as Ryan Arbuthnot starts us off 
Inbounding to Colt. And the quarter's underway. Mustangs get the ball first here. Get it to Rosen Trader in the corner. Now cross court pass up top. Back to Rosen Trader. He takes a couple dribbles, takes a shot, no good. Monzo with the rebound. Gets it over to Shibley, takes a couple dribbles up to Noah Lees, and he'll bring it down. Goes left side to McCarter for three. I don't know if that was blocked or just a bad shot, but it didn't catch any rim. And now Rosen Trader all the way down the left side. Blocked. But blocked out of bounds. It'll be Mustang ball. Looked like a lot of contact there. The ref said uh, no foul. Uh, Rosen Trader a little upset with that. And Darren Schroeder will check in the game. For Rosen Trader. Uh, three pointer by Colt Schroeder up off the rim. Goes off the top of the backboard. And that's a violation. It'll be over to the Eagles. Full court man to man, it looks like, for the Mustangs. They inbound it to Eklund. He passes it down. A couple dribbles over to Lees. He's got Colt Schroeder on him, and he'll reverse it back out to the top and start the offense. Shibley with it back to Lees, the baseline runner up and good. Number 21, Noah Lees, got four points. McCarter leads the Eagles with six. One minute gone here in this fourth quarter. As the Eagles knock it out of bounds, it'll be stay here with the Mustangs. Ryan Arbuthnot to inbound the ball, gets it into the backcourt, just about stole it away, took a wild swat at it. Schroeder breaks the timeline to Beattie, who dribbles down the right side, now back over to Schroeder. Inside to Arbuthnot, takes one dribble, gets it over to Gage, they've been working that angle all night, the shot up no good, rebound Monzo. Pushes it up to Lees. Lees trying to push the action, almost loses it. Colt Schroeder trying to get that ball picked free. Unable to do so, that leaves Shively open for three. No good. He's got two three-pointers on the night. And rebound goes to Gage, but he gets it to Bart, who is trapped in the corner, and another timeout taken before the turnover. And Eggleston, Micah Eggleston with the timeout, saves the possession again. He's going to take a 30-second timeout. So with 6.22 to go in the game, the Overton Eagles lead the SM Mustangs, 22-10. Tonight they're going to do a split the pot benefit. Um, this is to benefit the SEM post-prom party. You can purchase your tickets in the lobby, which if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're not gonna be here to do that. But if you know that there's somebody here at the game, that could get you a ticket. You could text them, have them go and get you a ticket, and you can pay them later after you win the split the pot. They'll be happy to split that with you. Drawing will be at halftime of the boys' varsity game, and the junior class and junior parents appreciate your support. They're uh, also taking paper products. There's uh, been kind of a challenge between the SEM and Overton to see who could get the most paper products donated to uh, help those in need. And we're back into action now as the Mustangs bring the ball down the court after the timeout by Coach Eggleston. Darren has it on the corner, up to Gage. Gage cross court pass to Bart. He dribbles once and gets it back up to Colt. Little apprehension here, they don't look like they're too confident, and, uh, but Arbuthnot will take it inside. A lot of contact, goes through the contact, gets the shot. Sometimes when you're strong enough to pull through that contact, you don't get the call. And a uh, foul at the other end as McCarter takes it to the hole and is fouled by, I believe that's Schledowitz, and it is his second. Team's fourth. Overton with five team fouls. Shot up and good. McCarter adds to his game high lead here of seven points. Oh, I'm sorry, he's tied with Shively for seven. And now he does have the lead after he hits the second one. Mustangs breaking the press this time with five guys back in the back of the court. Schledowitz takes it down the right side. Now it looks like the Overton Eagles have gone to his zone. 
2-3 zone look. So a lot of different defensive looks here for Overton. They've gone with a straight up man-to-man, -man, a trap, and now a 2-3 zone. Rosen Trader over to Colt, back over to Jace. A couple dribbles back to Colt, dribbles in over to Gage. Gage to Ryan, Ryan takes it to the middle, now dishes it back to Gage, the jump shot up, no good, rebound Monzo. He gets it over to Lee and they push it down the court. 5.22 to go in the game, Mustangs down 24 to 10. Number 20 has it, drives right side, gets it down to Lees on the baseline. He's got Colt on him. He's definitely got the size advantage. He gets it to Eklund, and his jumper is good. Blake Eklund with his first two points of the game, 6'3", sophomore, definitely has the most size in the game. Monzo is also a big kid. Not so much tall, but pretty strong kid for a JV freshman. Oh, he's a sophomore. Mustangs beginning a little sloppy offense on the top. Colt drives the lane. Got three guys on him, dishes it back out to Jace, who turns it over inside. I think he was going for Ryan Arbuthnot, but pass went a little bit errant there to the wide side of the court. And now Shively has it. They reverse it around to Lee. He dribbles right. Steal attempt by Colt. Now it leaves Lee free to take it to the whole block by Ryan Arbuthnot. Nice defensive job of Ryan Arbuthnot to step over after Lee went around his defender. Ryan in the lane, the shot up, and it was blocked this time. It looked like that might have been by Lee, too. So they get each other blocked on both ends of the court. Shibley has it. Pass it inside. Stolen by Arbuthnot. Puts it over to Bart Beatty up to Colt. Colt over to Gage. Gage drives in. He's met. By number 20, gets it back. They reverse the ball across, and Beatty dribbles to the corner. Jace Rosentrader for three. He's fouled. And he'll go to the line and shoot three. The rare opportunity for... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you call it an old-fashioned three-point play, but an unconventional one for sure. That's McCarter's first personal. Team sixth. Rosen Trader nails the first one. He's got three points of the Mustangs' 11 total points. Second shot's up. It's good. Rosen Trader making his free throws count. As we get some more Overton Eagles checking in, looks like another JV player, Creighton Elfgren, in the game. Rosen Trader's third shot. No good. The ball bounces around and goes out of bounds off of the Eagles. So the Mustangs will get the possession back. See if they can make uh, use of this free possession here. Arbuthnot gets it over to Colt. Colt back to Ryan. Ryan looks inside to Gage. He gets it inside. Eklund fouls him. And Gage will go to the line for two. Eklund, second personal. Team seventh, so they're in the bonus now. Mustangs will shoot for the rest of the fouls. And Gage hits the first one. That gives him three points from the line now, and two field goals for seven points. He leads the Mustangs in scoring. Second one rolls around and drops in. And a full court press, and Bart Beatty almost gets the steal. And Anderson brings it down the right side. They just break the pressure. And a reaching foul called. This might be on Bart. Bart and Jace are talking to each other, trying to figure out what's going on here. That foul went on Gage, his third. I didn't see him over there, but... Lee has it on top with Cole Schroeder tightly guarding him. Eklund sets the pick, rolls, gets the pass, and it's stolen by Jace Rosentrader. He's got numbers, goes all the way down, tries to head fake Lee. Lee blocks him, good block. And Lee ends up with the ball. And Monzo has it here down on the side. Arbuthnot does a good job not fouling. 
Kind of sloppy ball bringing it up here down the right side. Mustangs getting real aggressive with under three minutes to go in the game, down 26-14. This JV boys action. Anderson has it, passes it far side to Monzo, inside to Eklund. Eklund on Schledowitz, tries to pass it down low. They pass it back outside, the shot up and good. That was a flat shot that ended up just bouncing right. Creighton Elfman gets two points. Rosentrader has it on top, 28-14. Tipped away by Lee, but Colt Schroeder ends up with it. Inside pass to Schledowitz. He gets double teamed, passes it out to Ryan. Ryan has it in the lane. Gets the guy to lean into him, no call. Schledowitz takes it in, and he ends up with it. Overton uh, knocked his glasses off, and both of the Eagles players went over to help him pick up those glasses. You like to see the sportsmanship here by both of these teams, especially uh, the visitors. That's always good for him. That was number 33, Blake Eklund's third foul. Oh, he's getting his money worth out of his fouls in two quarters. First one up, no good. Darren Schroeder comes into the game, as does Wyatt Riebschlager. Schledowitz trying to add to his eight points here in these two quarters of ball game. And he does. He gets nine now. And the Mustangs in their half-court trap. They break it pretty easily. And, but they lose control of it. I thought he was going to have that pretty easy, but Gage Schledowitz ended up Cutting off the passing lane. Bart Beatty for three, no good. Monzo with the rebound. Darren Schroeder on defense. He's hustling back now. Lee takes it coast to coast, up and in. Ooh, some contact there between Darren and Lee. They both look at each other and make sure they're okay. Lee's got six points. Colt Schroeder comes down, minute 40 to go. Turnover, Eagles got it. Schroeder trying to get it back, a jump ball called and it'll be Overton ball still. Minute 33 to go in the game, 15 to 30. It seems like Overton's been doubled up the Mustangs all night on the scoreboard. Continue to do so at this point of the game. Inbound, almost loses it. Tipped by Colt, but they end up with it. Lux has it, passes it to Reebschlager. It goes out of bounds. Mustangs ball after the turnover, 126 to go in the game. Colt Schroeder brings it down the left side. Now he passes it across court to Rosentrader. Back to Colt. Oh, a little runner in the lane by Colt Schroeder. Nice looking shot there. That's what you want to see in a JV game. I haven't seen that shot before. Almost a running jump hook. Very nice shot. When he's lacking size, you do whatever you can. Eklund gets inside with the rebound, puts it up, no good. Rebound, Colt Schroeder. He's having a great JV game tonight. Bart Beatty has it up this side. Over to Jace for three. I misses. Rebound, Gage. Gage has it underneath. His shot blocked by Eklund. Reebschlager ends up with it. Gets it over to Anderson. Anderson up to Lux, and Lux bringing it up. Three on one, fast break. He passes it up. Easy shot. Up and in. Great enough, Ben, as Darren Schroeder, the only Mustang back on defense there with three off offensive players for the Eagles. Pretty tough to stop that. Rosentrader has it on top. 20 seconds to go. A little contact there. They let a lot of contact go. Gage with the shot from the elbow. No good. Rebound to Anderson. And I get a ref telling them not to reach, but they're reaching. Get it up, bring it down, six, five seconds, four, Anderson inside, three, they're just gonna dribble it out. Good sign of sportsmanship there too. Why extend it, you already got the 32-17 victory. So I like what I'm seeing with the sportsmanship between these two teams in this boys JV basketball game. Mustang played with a lot of heart, just got outscored tonight in the JV action, and we'll start the girls warm up here shortly. And then we'll get into some action. Our bronze level Sumner Eddyville Miller Scholars Scholarship supporters, the $10 to $99 range. Bill and Sarah's Cheesecake. Burr Ag Repair. Is it bad that when I read Bill and Sarah's Cheesecake, I, my mouth filled with <laughs> water? Creston Fertilizer. Farmhouse Floral. Miller. American Legion Auxiliary, number 351. Stevens Welding Shop, 
the main place. Rob and Jennifer Anderson family, Tim and Janet Burr, Roger and Shelley Dowd, Jared and Madeira Eggleston family, Pastor Ken and Angie Hudson, Patterson family, Dirk and Kristen Triplett family, Larry and Ann Bentley, Todd and Chris Dakey family, Dan and Sandy Eggleston, Kevin and Heather Finke family, Riley and Christy Jones family, Bill and Sarah Scoville family, and the Scott and Jill Williams family. The SEM scholars would like to give a special thanks to all those, and your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you, and go Mustangs. I promised you that I'd uh, come back to the Colton Crusaders fundraiser, and I wanted to make sure I had some information before uh, I mentioned that. But if you can go online to the Colton Crusaders Facebook page and bid on the silent auction items. So they have a silent auction going on Facebook tonight, especially for this last home game. And the benefits will go to the Colton Crusaders and of course, Colton Eggleston was a kindergarten boy that went to school here at SEM and contracted cancer and passed away. But his memory, his memory lives on through the Colton Crusaders who help raise money to cure cancer and to help other cancer patients. So please be generous and uh, go to the Colton Crusaders Facebook page. Colton spelled C-O-L-T-O-N. And uh, make sure you bid on those silent auction items. We'd like to see that uh, raise a lot of money here for a great cause.
A lot of stuff going on tonight, so I apologize if there's not a lot of commentary here in between the games, trying to get all my ducks in a row. We're going to be introducing the seniors, Ellie Goodhart and Tessa Atkins. I'll just read what Coach Rohde has written for me to read since it's really hard to hold two microphones at the same time. We have two seniors on our team this year. These are Coach Rohde's words I'd like to recognize. Tessa Atkins and Ellie Goodhart. Tessa is a player who hustles every day, all practice long. She hasn't had the court time and games or practices most seniors get, but she works hard, has learned a lot, and has improved her skills this year. I just appreciate her work ethic and attitude she displays for our team and myself. Thank you all you have done. Thank you for all you have done to make our team better. Ellie Goodhart. Ellie has put up with me since junior high. When I think of a basketball word for Ellie, I think versatile. She has played every position on the court for us from point guard to center and does it without hesitation because she understands it's best for our team. I appreciate her leadership she has shown this year and her willingness to do what is asked of her each game. Ellie and Tessa, Coach Hunt and I, hope you enjoy the rest of your senior year and wish you both good luck in everything in the future. Words from Coach Rohde. Six minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the warm-up. <clears throat> then we'll get on with senior night, Star Spangled Banner, and the starting lineups, and then the game. Hi.
All right, uh, we've got just under five minutes to go here in the warm-up before we get going. Once again, don't forget to bid on the silent auction on Facebook. Colton Crusader is on Facebook. Get your sweetheart a Valentine gift. It's never too late. Sunday is the day if you forgot. This is a great way to make up for the fact that maybe it slipped your mind. Go online, put yourself a bid in on that silent auction, and get your sweetheart a Valentine's Day gift. The starters for the Overton Eagles tonight are number three, a 5'4 junior, Maylee Meyer. Number 13, a 5'11 senior, Rachel Eklund. Number 15, a six foot senior, R Haley Fleshman. A number 23, a 5'9 senior, Peyton Floral. Trying to do two things at once here. And number 25, a 5'3 junior, Addison Luther. The Mustangs will start with number three, a 5'5 junior, Abby Rohde. Number five, a 5'7 junior, Faith Hernandez. Number 14, a six foot junior, Addie McFarlane. Number 22, a 5'11 freshman, Micah O'Neill. Number 24, a 5'10 senior, Ellie Goodhart. The Mustangs are 10 and six this year, 12th in the state in class D2. And uh, Micah Eggleston is 14th overall in the state in class D2 for points per game with 14 points per game. And 27th in the state in rebounds at 7.1 rebounds per game. Addie McFarlane, also in the rebounding category with 6.1 rebounds per game. That's in the top 50. Overton comes in with a record of 18 and four and they are a class C2 school and they are 16th in the state. So it's gonna be a hard fought battle for the Mustangs tonight. And uh, Overton's losses came to Pleasanton twice, Ravenna, and Shelton. Other than that, they've swept the rest of their schedule so far. We'll see if the Mustangs can hand them their fifth loss. A D2 school against a C2 school. We'll bring it to you next.
But we watch, were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red flare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner. Starting lineups first for the visiting Overton Eagles. Number three, Maylee Meyer. Number 13, Rachel Eklund. Number 15, Haley Fleshman. Number 23, Peyton Floral. And number 25, Addison Luther. The Eagles are coached by Nicole Arp. And now for your SEM Mustang. Number three, a 5'5 five five junior, Abby Rohde. Number five, a 5'7 five junior, Faith Hernandez. Number 14, a six foot junior, Addie McFarland. Number 22, a 5'11 freshman, Micah O'Neill. And number 24, a 5'10 senior, Ellie Goodhart. All right, that is done. Now the easy part, calling the game. All right, so the tip-off between Addie McFarland and Fleshman. Oh no, that was Eklund. The tip is won by McFarland. Hernandez has it on the right side. Looks like the uh, Overton's in a 2-3 zone. As they swing it around the top, looking for a hole inside in this zone. O'Neill has it on the left side, hits McFarland, cutting across the lane, the shot up, blocked, no good. Rebound number 23, Peyton Floral. She gets it up the court. That's Meyer over there. The three-pointer up by Eklund. No good. Rebound, the ever-versatile Ellie Goodhart, as said in the speech. That's what Ellie does. She gets all those cleanup rebounds. Plays a great defense, and she's there when you need her. Faith Hernandez with a deep three off the back of the rim, no good, and a foul on Abby Rohde as she goes over the back. No score here, a minute gone in the game. Two very good teams, the SEM Mustangs, 12th in the state. Overton, 25th in the state, but we're talking class. Oh, I'm sorry. Overton's no. Overton's 16th. But it's class C2 against class D2 tonight. Ball gets tipped around, almost goes out of bounds. Tried to save it, uh, Ellie tried to save it, but it goes out of bounds and it'll be Eagle Ball underneath the basket. Meyer looks like she's gonna throw it in. She slaps the ball, kind of move around. Number 25 has it, over to Eklund. Eklund to Meyer, Meyer back. Now Luther has it, back over to Eklund. Meyer inside, try to get it to Fleshman, stolen. Hernandez has it stolen from her. Ball's loose. Eklund gets it, throws it up to Meyer underneath, and Goodhart ends up with it. Another uh, possession started by Ellie Goodhart. As Mike O'Neill takes it in the lane, she's fouled to go to the line for two. Fouls on Fleshman, her first. And so let's see if the Mustangs can score the first points of the night. Mike O'Neill is 14th in scoring in Class D2 with 14 points per game. Her first shot's up, no good. Uh, 
And now the second so, shot. It's up and no good. Rebound to Ellie Goodhart, but she's stepped on the line, I believe. Yep, it'll be a turnover, Eagles ball. And Overton will bring it down. 6.22 to go in the quarter. No score, one foul apiece for each team. They move it across. Eklund drives down the baseline, goes past O'Neill, gets the shot up, no good. Rebound, Ellie Goodhart draws the foul. The foul will be on 31, Jolie Ryan, her first. And she had checked into the ball game. And Abby Rodeo will bring it down for the Mustangs. Gets it over to Hernandez. Back over to Rody. It's Micah inside to McFarlane at the elbow. Now they go back outside. A three-pointer by Hernandez off the front of the rim. No good. She gets her own rebound. Throws it in. Has to save it. Fleshman ends up with it. She throws it out. His body's on the floor. McFarlane ends up with it. Passes it out to O'Neal. O'Neal does a spin move underneath. Loses control. And Florell ends up with it. So a turnover for the Mustangs. Results in a possession for the Eagles. Pass inside to Fleshman, who has good position. She gets it up and in, and the first points of the game go to Haley Fleshman of Overton. After two and a half tough minutes, you can tell this might be a defensive battle here tonight. A little tip there by Eklund, but O'Neill ends up with it. We're going across the top here. Hernandez looking for someone to throw it to. High pass, dangerous pass, stolen by Florell. And here come the Eagles again. Kind of a rainbow pass there by Hernandez, not what you want to see. The drive, the dish to Eklund for three with Micah O'Neill closing out. She hits it. Rachel Eklund with a three, five to zero, Overton. Hernandez has it outside the three-point line on the left side, watches Micah O'Neill go through. Might have had her for a second. O'Neill ends up with it on the baseline. Now they move it back across the top. Hernandez on top with Abby on the wing. Micah on the other wing. Get it over to that left wing to Micah. Tries to get it inside to Ellie. Goes through her hands. Saved by Fleshman. And uh, Eagles end up with it. Turnover is becoming a problem for the Mustangs on the last few possessions. See three turnovers. And McFarland causes a turnover of her own as she gets the steal. Gets the ball back. Five to zero, halfway through the first quarter. Hernandez has it on the right wing, gets it down to Addy on the baseline. She makes a bad pass, taken by O'Neill, takes it all the way in, the shot, a lot of contact, no call. Probably a good no call. I think both girls kind of gave about equal amount of contact. Micah tried to save it, but it went out of bounds. It'll be Eagles ball. McFarland hits the bench. Looks like she might have taken a shot. And uh, Audrey Ryder comes into the game. The only player in the game with a mask on. Stolen by Mike O'Neill. She takes it down. She's got a goes into a crowd and somehow gets it up and in. Mike O'Neill with the first points for the Mustangs. Five to two, 3.30 to go in the quarter. Three pointer up by Macy, no good. Rebound underneath and a foul by Ryder. It looked like a pretty good block there, but Jolie Ryan with the offside rebound. And Ryder picks up a quick foul. And that'll send Ryan to the line for two. She hits the first one. Six to two the score. Ryan's second shot is up. In and out, rebound Ryder. Rody pushing it. Gets it to Hernandez, right side. Now they're gonna look to swing. Nope, back to Hernandez for three. This time she gets it. Faith Hernandez, a three-pointer. One for three, 33%, pretty good percentage. See if she can keep that going. Six to five, a one-point lead for the Eagles. Ryder with some good defense behind, but she's gonna get called for the foul on that one. I guess they're not gonna let him have too much contact inside. Two fouls on Audrey Ryder in one minute of play. 
That's and I don't know if either of them was a. Let's just say they weren't clear fouls. I'd be nice about it. Overton has it underneath the basket. Three pointer. Nope. She decides to pull it down. Gets it over to Eklund for three, and that one's up and in. Rachel Eklund with three, two three pointers leads all scorers with six. Hernandez has it on the right. She just hit a three the last time down. They get it to O'Neill. Back over to Hernandez for three. Will she answer? No. Off the front of the rim. Almost got her own rebound. And now the Eagles are out and running. Nice pass up the court. Shot no good. Mailey Meyer had a good look at the basket. But... And then Abby Rohde drags her back foot. And a travel call be a turnover. Addie McFarland back in the game for Audrey Ryder, who says two fouls in one minute and throws her mask down. <laughs> kind of smiles, lays back, goes over and talks to Coach Hunt. She gives her some instruction. Yeah, that's just a bummer. That's like Creighton Line, it seems like he just attracts fouls early in games. They're not usually very distinct fouls as Eklund takes a shot from the baseline, no good. Addie McFarland ties it up with Fleshman. And it looks like it'll be Overton ball since we got the tip. Jenna Claflin set to check in. Jenna, a 5'11 freshman, comes in for Ellie Goodhart. And Ellie needs her inhaler, so she's having a hard time breathing. Oh, nice play inside by uh, Jolie Ryan. Ends up getting the bucket inside on the inbounds play. 11 to five, back up to a six point lead. Jenna Claflin almost has it stolen. Ends up getting it back though. Gets it up to Rhodey. Rhodey switches the uh, sides there with Faith. Now back up top. Faith has it in the right corner. Gets it down to Jenna. Goes through. Bad pass. Stolen by Meyer. Meyer dribbling down the left side. Takes it all the way in. Up no good. But rebound Fleshman. She gets it over. Reverse it to the other side. Now they're going to pull it out front. Eklund has it on top and they're going to start over. Working it around the top now. They get it inside. The shot up, no good, blocked. She gets it back. Addie McFarland this time rips the ball away. McFarland on the leaders in class D2 and rebounds with 6.1, 6.4 rebounds per game. O'Neill ends up with it inside, blocked by Fleshman, saved by Jenna. Over to Addie. Addie to Abby, Abby to Faith, Faith for three, got it! Faith Hernandez, and a timeout taken. So Faith Hernandez and Rachel Eklund, each with two three-pointers, both of them leading their teams in scoring with six points each. And after, with one minute left to go in the first quarter, the score 11 to eight in favor of the Overton Eagles. Good action-packed first quarter here, a ball game between these two teams that are both rated high in their respective divisions. Overton Eagles come in here in class D. This is what's weird. The girls are class C2. The boys are class D2. Obviously, it goes about numbers and not gender. I always hate to say the word gender anymore in this day and age, but let's continue on. The Eagles inbound it. Just under a minute to go. Looks like they're running a little clock as Eklund walks up over the timeline. She gets it over there to Luther, who goes back cross court. Eklund dribbles over there, Rody on her. Back to Luther, Luther tries to go around O'Neal. O'Neal does a good job of shuffling her feet, getting back in front of her. Back to Eklund, thought about the three. Dribbles around, over to Meyer, now back to uh, Luther. Knocked out of bounds, and it will be Eagle Ball. I believe that was O'Neal that knocked it out. 32.6 seconds to go. Mustangs down three. Meyer to inbound. They had an easy bucket last time. This time they get it in the middle. Pass it down low, stolen by Mike O'Neill. 27 seconds to go. Let's see if they pull it out. Nope, she's gonna drive it all the way in. Up off the glass and good. Cut it to one point. Mike O'Neill going coast to coast. 18 seconds to go, Mustangs down by one. Eklund over the timeline, gets it over to Meyer. Meyer inside. This is a Tied up, good job of Abby Rohde fighting for it. It'll be Mustang's possession with 9.8 seconds and a chance to take the lead for the first time in the ball game here late in the first quarter. All right, 
9.8 seconds to go. Rohde brings it down in a fast jog. Pass it over to O'Neal. O'Neal has Ellie in the corner. Three, two, the shot. Got to be up now. And not quite enough time. The shot was off by Hernandez. It falls short anyway. So after one quarter of play, the Mustangs trail the Overton Eagles 11 to 10. Maddie McFarland getting in on the rebounding action, as is uh, Micah O'Neill. Micah averaging 7.1 rebounds per game. Addie McFarland averaging uh, 6.4 rebounds a game. And I'll tell you this, the Overton ladies in Class C1, uh, sorry, Class C2, they're really good at rebounding. Haley Flashman is actually the overall leader, number one, in Class C2 and rebounding at 11.4 rebounds per game. Peyton Floral is 16th with 7.5 rebounds per game. Jolie Ryan, 6.6 .6 rebounds per game. She's 26th. And number 36, Rachel Eklund with 5.9 rebounds per game. So top 36 in Class C2 has four Overton Eagles in the rebounding category. Rachel Eklund also 23rd in points per game and Haley Fleshman 30. Seventh in points per game with 12 and 10.1 points per game, respectively. Meyer brings it up to start the second quarter, trying to add to the one point lead. Hold on to that one point lead. Meyer goes, tries to go left, gets it out to Ryan. We'll go far side now. Luther had it. Now Meyer has it on the side. She takes the baseline jumper with the lefty. No good. It gets stuck between the backboard and the rim. Don't see that very often. They're asking for a ball to get it out. I don't think that ref is pretty tall, but I don't think he can jump up there. Well, try one. No good. Try two. He missed the whole thing and hit the underside of the backboard. Now he lets Ellie do it, and she can't get it out. <laughs> is this a Globetrotter show? And they get it out to the... Applause from the crowd. They could go on the road with that little Globetrotter routine, I think. 7.30 to go in the half. Mustangs trail by one, trying to take their first point lead, first lead of the game. Sorry, a little distracted listening to Coach Rody yell. Yelling out his offense. Addie McFarland gets on the elbow. She gets it back to Abby over to Faith. One dribble back to Abby, over to Ellie. They're moving the ball quick, trying to get stay ahead, get ahead of this 2-3 uh, zone for the Overton Eagles. They get it inside to O'Neal, who takes it down the lane, throws it up off the backboard, no good. Rebound, Fleshman. If she's around the rebound, she ends up with it most of the time. Mustang's also a good rebounding team, though. So it'll be fun to watch on the inside tonight. Florell ends up with it. All the way over to Meyer for three. Got it. Maley Meyer. Nails one from the corner. And 14 to 10, just like that. Two possession lead for the Eagles with 6.33 to go in the half. And Myers tips it. Goes out of bounds. That point to wing pass. A little bit too telegraphed. A little too slow that time but the Mustangs will retain possession. Rody ends up with it, now over to Micah. Micah inside to Addie. Addie back out to Micah and across. Addie clears the lane just in time. Micah has it over here, double team. She head fakes, goes baseline, throws up a runner on the baseline, no good. Rebound, Eklund. And she'll bring it down the right side. Drives into the lane over to the right. Florell with the baseline jumper, no good. Rebound O'Neal and she's out and running. She's got Luther on her. She turns around, pulls it out, gets it over to Rody and slows it back down again. Inside to Ryder, the shot up off the backboard, no good. Shot from the elbow, rebounded by Eklund. She th throws it up to Luther. Luther underneath the Fleshman up and fouled from behind. We'll send Haley Fleshman to the line for two. I think Coach Rohde said it right. They've got to get back on defense. They're getting outrun by the bigs of Overton to the hole. 
That's Abby Rohde's second personal foul, the team's fourth. As freshman rolls around the rim twice and flushes the toilet. That was over. Second shot. Much easier, a swish. Fleshman with four points. And that extends the Eagles lead to 16 to 10. 5.35 to go in the half. Around just inside the three point line, O'Neill puts one up, no good. Rebound by Audrey Ryder. Misses, gets her own rebound, puts it up. Fouled this time, it looks like it's Florell. They're gonna say it's on the floor. And so the Mustangs will have it underneath as Goodhart checks back into the game. That foul was on Fleshman, her second. Thought maybe that was on Florell, but Fleshman. Goodhart underneath the Ryder, she gets it and the foul. Audrey Ryder snuck in the backside of that play, out of bounds play. Good pass by Goodhart to get it to her. She gets it and the bucket. And Eklund picks up her first personal. To cut it to one possession, she makes it. Three point play the old fashioned way for Audrey Ryder and the Mustangs back into this 16-13. Trailing by three. They haven't led in the ball game yet. They've been within one. Here in the uh, second quarter. Overton working it around the top, looking for a hole in the 2-3 zone of the Mustangs now. Florell steps in, she's double teamed, kind of stuck, floats it over to Fleshman, puts it up and in. Haley Fleshman barely got that one off, but got it to roll around and fall. Five point lead back again for the Eagles. O'Neill has it over on the right side. Oh, Rody dribbles into the middle and dishes it back out to O'Neill. Just about an over and back, but Hernandez somehow <laughs> saved it, and then Rody throws it out of bounds over the head of Ellie Goodhart, the intended receiver. That was just a sloppy possession overall. They're going to have to tighten things up if they want to beat the uh, Class C2 Overton Eagles tonight with their 18 and 4 record coming into Sumner. Eklund has it on the wing. She drives down the baseline. The shot's up and good. A good looking shot by Rachel Eklund. She knew she was going to shoot that as soon as she caught it. She's got eight points on the night. Leads the Eagles in scoring. 20 to 13. Mustangs down seven. Halfway through the second quarter. Inside to Goodhart. She has it at the free throw line. Makes a little move, shot up off the backboard, no good. Rebound Eklund, she pushes it up the right side to Meyer. Meyer trying to catch him napping, goes inside, and she's fouled by Abby Rohde. That'll send her to the line for two. That's her third personal. We haven't seen Abby in foul trouble this year in a home game anyway. So we'll see how she does here. She's got three fouls, under four minutes, just under four minutes to go here in the second quarter. Meyer's first free throw misses badly. Addie checks in for Abby. Meyer's second shot is up. Bounces around, no good. Rebound Ryder gets it out to Hernandez. Seven point lead now for the Eagles, still I guess. 20 to 13, the pass inside, it bounces around, McFarland ends up with it, no good, gets her own rebound, puts it up and in with the left hand as she's fouled. Great job of adding McFarland using her left hand. That's the only way she would have got that thing up there. A foul goes on Peyton Florell, her first. McFarland to the line for another chance at a three point play. Audrey Ryder just completed one as she goes over and talks to Coach Hunt. Almost came off the floor, which wouldn't have been good. McFarland, deep knee bend, shot up, no good. Rebound. Ryan, one of those rebounding leaders. Overton does a good job of rebounding, no doubt of that. Fleshman trying to post up inside, looking for her. Now a pick on Myers, man. She takes her all the way in. The shot up, no good. Bodies all over the place. Mike O'Neill ended up on the court. Eklund ends up with it, jump shot no good, rebound Meyer, back out to Eklund, they'll try again. 20 to 15, three minutes to go in the half. Meyer has it now. 
Back up top, now over this side to 41. I haven't seen her yet. That's Ashlyn Florell. And she'll take the three. That one's no good. Rebound, Ryder had it for a second, but it was knocked out of bounds by the shooter. Ashlyn for Florell, and that'll be Mustang ball. Under three minutes to go, 20 to 15, here in our first half of action between the Overton Eagles and the SEM Mustangs in this girls' varsity contest. Nice passing by Addie McFarland inside, finding Audrey Ryder open in the middle of the lane. She puts it up and in, and Ryder has five points. 20 to 17. I'm moving around the top. Over to Florell. She tries to get it inside to Ryan. She loses it. O'Neill ends up with it, comes out of the pack. She loses it, and it goes out of bounds. It looked like her head was ahead of her body as she went down the court. She kept trying to reach down and grab that ball, and it just kept being right out of reach. She gets, she's a great player, Mike O'Neill. Leads the Mustangs in scoring and rebounding this year as a freshman. You're going to see a lot of good things coming from her. Meyer for three. No good. Rebound. Ryan. It's out to Fleshman. He puts it up and in. Fleshman just standing there. And the save goes right to her. Fleshman now with eight points. Tied with Eklund for the Eagles team lead in points. Ellie Goodhart almost banks one in from three. Eklund with the rebound. Eklund's got four or five rebounds already here in the first half. And they work the ball around here. 22-17, a minute and a half to go. The shot up there by Ryan, no good. Knocked out of bounds by Eklund. The Mustang ball. Good hard inbound to Hernandez. Hernandez swallows hard and starts dribbling down the court. Pass it over to O'Neal. O'Neal looking for somebody. Hernandez has it over to Ellie. Ellie cross court to Micah who drives the lane. She puts one up, wild shot, no good. Rebound Fleshman. Gets it out to Eklund and they come down trying to extend that five point lead. Just over a minute to go in the half. Bring it across, some contact there. Probably gonna be a foul on O'Neill. She kind of lost control. Tessa Nichols checks in for Mike O'Neill. Just under a minute to go. We're gonna go right here soon. Goes to the right. Underneath, the shot up, no good. Esports parents, if you'll make your way to the lobby, we'll get lined up for esports parents tonight. We'll start at half time. Thank you. All right, just under a minute, well, 53.7 seconds to go. 22 to 17 is the score. Foul on Ellie Goodhart, her first. The shot goes up and in for, who is that, Florell, Peyton Florell. Whoops. Second shot is up, no good. Rebound, bounces around, and Fleshman ends up with it. Out to Meyer. As soon as this half ends, Eklund's going to hold it and wait for the clock to burn down here. They got a five, what, six point lead now. As soon as this half hits, I got to go, so it's going to be a little mic silence for a while. Florell is fouled on the inside. She'll go to the line and shoot two. I believe that might have been on Goodhart. 22. Oh, Mike O'Neill, her first personal. Team's eighth foul. First one's off, no good. Still a six point lead. Second shot up, no good. All right, I'm gonna go get ready for parents night here. So you can just watch the action here.
So the sports parents tonight, first of the seventh graders, we have Wyatt Dodd, son of Jake and Sarah Dodd. Tracy Clinkman, son of Greg Clinkman and Danny Clinkman Jr. Lewis Pippins, son of Kara Whippin. Eighth graders, we have Carson Bosak, son of Mandy and eSports coach Justin Bosak. Avery McKee, son of Nick and Kelly Harrison. Ninth grade, Evelyn Owens, daughter of James and April Owens. Darren Schroeder, son of Brad and Johnny Schroeder. We have freshman Colt Schroeder, sophomore Michaela Schroeder, and junior Hunter Schroeder, son of Matt and Tim Schroeder. Sean Russell, son of Jude Smith and Joe Russell. Escorted by Mr. Bill. Dave Sullivan, son of Dave and Kelly Sullivan. Tucker Weitzel, son of Amanda and James Weitzel. <laughs> Logan Gilmore, daughter of Amanda Gilmore and Matt Kirk Gilmore. Raymond Gilbeard, daughter of Christy Denton and Matt Gilbeard. And the last senior, Carson Rowe, son of Ashley Rowe. Thank you, parents.
All right, so we got about three minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the half before we start the second half of action. Our halftime score, 23-17. Overton Eagles with the lead. Whew. A lot of running down there. I did peek through the lobby at the silent auction items. There were a whole bunch of roses, a whole bunch of uh, heart-shaped candy things, uh, T-shirts, really nice. Um, God, what a... I'll get a list. I'll get Maddie to go down and she'll make a list. Here, I gotta have this one. She's gonna make a list of items that they're doing on the silent auction. You can also follow it uh, on Facebook at Colton Crusaders on Facebook. Just go to the search button on Facebook, put in Colton Crusaders, it should come up. Uh, yeah. And those items will be on there. All right, so we're just getting ready to start the second half. Mustangs trail by six, and Overton will end up with the ball here to start. Looks like both teams start the same way they started the game. Got Abby, Micah, Faith, Ellie, and Addie out there for the Mustangs. 2-3 zone again. And then Overton swings the ball around. Now Luther picks up a dribble, gets it over to Meyer. Back over to Luther, dribbles inside. Draws the double team, now move the ball into the corner. Eklund takes the baseline jumper up, no good. Rebound offside by Overton. And they'll start back out top again. That was Florell with the rebound. Meyer, a couple dribbles in, pass over to Florell. Long cross court pass to Eklund, takes it down the baseline. Another shot, this time up off the window and good. Eklund with 10 points, gets into double digits, and she leads the Eagles in scoring. Hernandez has it, all the way over to O'Neal on the right wing. Ball bounces around, ends up in Hernandez's hand. Florel, or, uh, Luther ends up on the deck, and Fleshman has it go through her hands, just about had the turnover. And Goodhart will take it out underneath as it went off of Overton out of bounds. Seven minutes to go in the second half and the ball game. Mustangs down 25-17. A three-pointer in the corner by Faith Hernandez, her third three-pointer of the game. She's got nine points and leads the SEM Mustangs in scoring, and now they're within five again. So the excitement starts to build. Mustangs in their defensive stance, trying to keep the 
Overton Eagles out of the middle of the basketball court where they do most of their scoring. Eklund thought about a three. Now she passes it over to Meyer. She dribbles in a couple of dribbles. Now she dribbles back out over to Florell. She takes a baseline, knocked out of bounds. O'Neill, it'll be Eagles ball underneath. Eklund getting ready to inbound. Telling him to watch the corner. See what happens. Fleshman takes it in the corner. Gets it over to Meyer. Going back to Eklund in the corner. Now the post up by Fleshman. She's triple teamed to get her back across. But Luther takes the three and she gets it. So good ball movement. Addison Luther, first points of the game come in the form of a three, 28 to 20. Hernandez for three. No good off the front of the rim. Thanks. Rebound, Eklund. She pushes the ball up to Florell who's open and they out hustle the Mustangs. Florell gets her first two point bucket of the night. She's got three. And now it's a 10 point lead, so not the way the Mustangs wanted to start the second half. Stolen by Eklund. Good job of working through that post up by Addie McFarlane. Eklund takes it into the lane, all the way up in, no good. Rebound O'Neill. Another rebound for Mike O'Neill. She gets it up to Abby. Abby driving in. She doesn't have numbers. Steps on the girl's foot. Kind of puts her ankle, but the ball goes out of bounds off of the Eagles. Ellie Goodhart comes out of the ball game. And Audrey Ryder goes in. Rody inbounds it over to Hernandez. Hernandez dribbles. Now pass it back to Rody. Get it down the baseline to McFarlane. Pass inside to Audrey Ryder. And Audrey puts it in. She's got seven points. And they cut it back to a single digit lead, 22 30. Nice cross court pass to Florell, and Addie McFarlane blocks it out of bounds. Nice shot block. McFarlane looks gassed. Well, they better get on the inside there. Wow. They pass it in. They missed an opportunity to get one inside, but Fleshman ends up with it. Another block by McFarlane. Boy, there's a lot of contact underneath. Ryan ends up with it. She misses. And Mike O'Neill comes out of the pack with it. She's got one girl to beat, goes all the way in, a little reach, no call, a little contact, but okay. Fleshman on the other end, puts it up and in. Haley Fleshman, I think she's done that turnaround shot several times before, she's got 10. And we got a timeout, Coach Rohde, the 10 point lead for the Overton Eagles with 4.44 to go in the third quarter. 32-22 Overton. All right, so that silent auction, they've got some gift baskets. They've got some decor signs, candy, skincare products, some flowers and t-shirts. So all kinds of good things out there in that Coulter, Colton's Crusaders silent auction. Some really good Valentine's Day presents. They tried to get me to get flowers and candy for my wife, but I've already bought her a present. I know she deserves more. I'll have to call 17 more games while to get him. <laughs> All right, here we go. Up the right side. Hernandez over to Abby. Now over to Micah. Inside to Ellie. Boy, they're passing it fast. Eklund deflects it. She gets it. Drives down. Takes a shot over a roadie. And the height just got her on that one. And Eklund scores again. She's got 12 now. She leads all scorers. Mike O'Neill looking for somebody to go through. Offense looking a little stagnant, but they do get it inside to Ryder who throws one up off the backboard, no good. Fleshman ends up with a rebound over to Luther who drives down the right side. She doesn't have any numbers, so she passes over to Ryan Eklund, now in the corner to Florell. She takes a baseline, double team, gets it back to Eklund. Eklund over to Ryan, Ryan floats it into Fleshman. Bounces around and Ryder ends up taking it away. So a turnover for the Eagles, Mustangs trying to get Back within 10, they're down 12, 34-22. Goodhart ends up in the lane with it. Back out to Hernandez, far side, cross-court pass to O'Neill. Inside to Ryder, Ryder up, no good. A lot of contact on those shots inside, but they're not a, it's not a lot. It's not like hard contact, it's light contact. As long as they just keep letting it go for both teams, it's no, not a big deal. And I think that's been pretty good uh, refereeing calls on both sides. They're letting them play inside, so they're gonna have to be physical. 
neither team with a foul here in the second half, so they can both amp up the defense, amp up the, the pressure and the contact, and not have to worry about too many fouls. Abby Rohde, the only girl on either team with three or more fouls, and she's only got three. Audrey Ryder with two, Haley Fleshman with two, everybody else with one. Rachel Eklund and Haley Fleshman, both seniors, one 5'11", one 6 foot. They have 12 and 10 points, so 22 points. They actually, just on their score alone, would have tied the Mustangs. So they need to uh, really watch those girls. Eklund can hit threes. She can hit those outside baseline jumpers. Fleshman gets all of her work done underneath. So a tall order ahead, literally, for the Mustangs against those girls from Overton. Overton inbounds it. Eklund points out where she wants uh, Luther to go. Luther goes there, gets a pass, moves it into the corner. Ryan. Baseline jumper off, no good. Addie McFarlane with the rebound. Abby Rohde comes out of the pack, looking to pass to O'Neill. Gets it to O'Neill down the right side. Nice pass over to Ellie at the, the elbow. She wanted to do something with it, but didn't quite have control. Now Hernandez throws up a three. No good. Rebound, Fleshman. She's got to be around double-digit rebounds already. Eklund has it at the three-point line. Takes a couple steps inside. Shoots a little floating jumper and nails it. They cannot let her shoot that. 15 foot jump shot, she's just too good of a shooter. Gotta have a hand in her face. A 5'11 senior can make her own space and create her own shot. And the Mustangs down 14, 36-22 as they try to find a hole in the Eagles defense. Both of them slap that girl, try to help her up, but she don't want any help up. So Ellie gets up on her own. That foul goes on Peyton Florell. For second, Audrey Ryder into the game for Ellie. A little bit of a red mark on that left arm. And they try to find an opening inside. They do get the ball in inside in time before the five second call. Rody ends up with it inside to Ryder. Ryder with a little jumper, no good. Rebound, Fleshman. 2.26 to go in the third quarter. Mustangs down 14, 36 to 22. They knew they were going to have a tough battle tonight against the Overton Eagles. Eklund for three. No good. Rebound Florell. She's fouled by Audrey Ryder, her third. That one was an obvious one on that one. The first two I wasn't so sure about, but she got her money's worth out of that one. But she didn't make the shot, so she'll have to go to the line and see if she can make some. She hasn't been shooting real good free throws tonight. She misses the first one. Second shot, it is up, and it's good. So she gets one to two. And 37-22 the score. Just over two minutes to go in the quarter. Inside, Goodhart. Out to Hernandez, head fake over to Abby. Abby to Micah. Micah drives the lane over Fleshman. No good. Rebound, Ellie Goodhart on the offside. Puts it up and in. Ellie Goodhart, her first two points of the game. Seems like the third quarter is about the time she gets warmed up offensively. Plays great defense early. And then uh, tries to amp up the offense in the second half. Let's hope she can keep that going on senior night. Pass partially tipped by Rody, but Eklund ends up with it. Drives in and puts it in. Rachel Eklund, another two-point bucket. 14 on the night for her. 24 for her and Fleshman combined. Equals the Mustangs' entire scoring output for the evening. Hernandez over to Abby. Abby to... Micah back to Abby, inside to Addie. She got it just inside the free throw line, puts up a jumper off the back of the rim, no good. O'Neill tracks it down, and she's fouled by Meyer. Good job of Mike O'Neill getting a hustle play on that one. And Meyer will end up with her first foul, the team's second. Two to one, the team fouls in this half. It's pretty amazing with a minute and 12 to go in a girls varsity game against two high functioning teams. Well, usually I guess they They've learned at this time of the season how to play. Hernandez, deep three, it's good! She was about five feet behind that three-point line. 
And she's got 12 points. Faith Hernandez with four threes. Only two points off the uh, leader for the whole, both teams, which is Eklund. Nice pass by Eklund, far side. Blocked by Abby Rohde, though. The shot by Ryan, blocked from behind. And Abby ends up with it, working on the right side now to Micah. Back to Abby. Abby to Micah again, looking inside, looking inside at the post. Back to Micah, over to Abby, almost wasn't ready for it. Faith ends up with it. They double team her quickly because she's been hot from the three. Oh, she might have been able to get one off there. Back up to Abby and they kind of reset. Micah looks for the three, now back over to Abby to Faith. They're working that around the top, trying to get the post players to cross underneath and find an opening. O'Neill head fake, takes a drive in the lane with the body. She's fouled and she'll go to the line. Maybe, that could have been on the floor, it's hard to tell. Fouls on 21, it's been into the game here. That's Ali Altwine, her first personal. And O'Neill will be at the line for two to cut it to 10 here with 6.6 .6 seconds to go in the third. First one's up and in, good shot. And Micah, she's got five tonight. A little off her scoring average. And her second one's good. We need to get a few more shots by Micah. Eklund in, they press around. Myers took the deep three, but the time had expired. Good defense by the Mustangs to take into the quarter break. And so after three quarters of play, the Mustangs trail by 10, 39-29 to the C2 Overton Eagles. The Overton Lady Eagles tonight come in with an 18 and four record. They're 16th in class C2 in the state rankings. A pretty good chance we'll see them down at the tournament there in Lincoln. Their wins come against Arapaho, Loomis, Gibbon, Axtell, Southern Valley, Centura, Anselmo Myrna, Amherst, Maxwell, Brady, North Platte, St. Pat's, Bertrand, Highline, Ansley Litchfield, Elm Creek, twice, Amherst, and Will Hill. And their losses, Pleasanton twice, and Ravenna and Shelton. The Mustangs were on a bit of a losing streak there. Uh, they'd lost three or four in a row before going to um, Twin Loop. And getting a win this last Tuesday. So they're hoping to keep that going. And they're going to have to make up a 10 point deficit here in the fourth quarter against a really good rebounding and inside scoring team, the Overton Eagles. And the Mustangs will start with possession so they can cut it to a one point lead with a score here. One point, one possession. Oh, geez to a single digit lead. <laughs> McFarland has it inside, takes a dribble, loses it. Eklund ends up with it and McFarland and it's a jump ball, it'll be Overton's ball. And the Eagles dribble it down, they cross half court. Get it over to the right to Macy or Maley. Meyer has it. Over to Eklund on that baseline. They double team her. Good idea there. Meyer drives and dishes over to Luther. Reverse pivots. Almost loses it. Good job of Rody to get her hand on that ball. Meyer ends up with it on top over to Eklund. I want to keep it out of Eklund and Fleshman's hands for sure. Meyer has it. They're willing to take some time off the clock here and just pass it around. Mustangs are going to have to get a little stingy on defense here. Maybe try to force a turnover. Meyer for three. It's good. Maley Meyer with her second three-pointer of the game. And it's a 13-point lead with a minute gone in the fourth. Mustangs are going the wrong direction here. Nice pass inside, high low to Addie McFarland. Good pass and assist from Michael O'Neill. Addie McFarland puts it in. Good job to catch it and put it up without bringing that ball down and having it stolen. So great job of pivoting in the lane and putting that up and in. Eklund just standing up there dribbling, content to watch things happen down low. And she's got it back again. Six and a half to go in the game. 
Now Florella has it at the elbow, double team. And they tie her up, and it'll be Mustang ball. So good job of the Mustangs stepping up, getting a little more aggressive. Ryder will check in, as does Ryan. McFarland to the bench, and Florell will hit the bench for the Eagles. 6.20 to go in the game, 42-31 the score. Abby comes down, passes it left to Ellie Goodhart. Inside to Mike O'Neill, back outside. Goodhart steps in, takes a jumper, no good. Rebound, Ryan. O'Neill just about wrestled that one away, but it kind of fell the wrong way. Six minutes to go in the game now. Eklund has it on top, now on the right wing. Gets it back up to Meyer on top, reverse over to Luther, back up to Meyer. Over to Eklund, dribbles down on the baseline. Abby Rohde meets her there, gets back up to Meyer. Faith picks her up. Now Micah's on Luther, back over to Meyer, over to Eklund. They're just running the shell drill across the top with Ryan and Fleshman cutting underneath. Meyer drives all the way down on the left side with the left hand, no good. Some slapping going on down there. It's knocked out of bounds, it'll be Mustang ball. 5.30 to go in the game. The Mustangs down 11. Plenty of time. They just need a couple baskets here. And stops to get back into this. Nice pass inside to Ryder. Over to Faith for three. She got it! Faith Hernandez with 15 points and five three-pointers. And that needed that very badly. They got it within eight points now. And Overton, they're starting to run that clock again. They still have the lead, but now it's into the single digits. Three-pointer up by Luther. No good, he gets her own rebound. And puts it up and in. Missed check out there by Goodhart. And now we gotta get another score back here and a stop. Goodhart ends up with it over to Rody. Rody inside to O'Neal, high low, tries to get it over to, well that was a low high to Ryder, went through her hands and ended up with Faith. Three pointer up by Ellie Goodhart, no good, rebound, Ryan. She uses her off arm to push off and it's really hard to see for the refs. Um, but hey, it's a great move, you can get it without getting called. She gets enough space and gets ahead of the taller players and makes the, the rebounds. That's how she got that one over O'Neal. Eklund takes the baseline runner up and in. We've seen that all night from Rachel Eklund. She's got 16 points now. O'Neal has it underneath. She's blocked by two Overton girls. Gets it to Ryder who has the shot in the lane. And it misses. Eklund tells Meyer to slow down. And they're under four minutes to go in the game with a 12 point lead. And a timeout called by Overton. Coach Nicole Arp wants to talk it over, and I'm guessing they're going to run some kind of an offense that will that will stall, get time to run off the clock, try to keep possession of the ball, force the Mustangs to come up and foul or be aggressive, maybe overplay, catch something backdoor to Fleshman or to Eklund. Eklund kind of seems to run the show on the wing. Does a great job of shooting that baseline jumper. I mean, she's been all over it tonight. Hasn't missed hardly any of those. It's nice to see some more fans in the stands as the NSA is opening it up to 75%. So now we don't just have parents and grandparents. We've got all kinds of people coming and cheering on the Mustangs. It's definitely a different atmosphere. The Mustangs haven't had the lead yet tonight. Fleshman gets it inside and puts it up and in. And that's 12 for... Haley Fleshman. And the Mustang's desperate now, down 12 again. Inside to McFarland, she's double teamed by Fleshman and Eklund. Gets it to Audrey, gets it over to Abby, puts one up, no good, rebound Faith. Good job of fighting for the rebound there by the undersized Faith Hernandez. Over to Abby, inside to Audrey, the shot up, no good, it might have been blocked. Eklund ends up with it underneath. 46-34, just three minutes and 10 seconds to go in the game. Overton in no hurry, get it inside to Ryan. Ryan squares up, has it taken away from her by Rody. Called a jump ball just a little too quick because Rody ended up with that one. She wrestled it away. I'd like to see him want to do that. But not sure what the extra buzzer is for, but. Oh, we had a clock problem on the one side. Now the clock's fixed, 3.03. Megan Weitzel on the clock tonight. 
one of my favorite kids of all time at SEM. Inside to Ryan, Ryan inside out to Luther for three. No good, rebound. Mike O'Neill gets good position. Haley Fleshman will pick up her third foul on a rebound. So good job, O'Neill getting good position. She got the rebound and the foul. 2.51 to go, Mustangs down 14. 48 to 34, McFarland down high low to Ryder. And a jump ball called on Eklund. And it'll be Overton ball. I remember when I was a kid, it was three seconds for a jump ball. One, two, three. Definitely not one, two, three. Oh, he had the wrong possession arrow, so now we got the possession arrow figured out, and the Mustangs get the ball. They need a three here, at least at least a two. They're going inside, they get it over to O'Neal. She drives the lane up off over Fleshman, who gets the bucket. Tough shot by Mike O'Neal over the... Six footer, and she gets it to go. Now they need a stop, 12 points down. 2.30 to go in the game. Cross court pass over to Meyer. She tries to get it down to Fleshman, stolen by Addie McFarland. Now the Mustangs could make a little dent in this thing. A two will get them within 10, a three into the single digits. Over to Rody. Rody hits a cutting rider, high low. A little bit of arm action on that one. O'Neill gets it, shoots it over Fleshman, fouled, and she'll go to the line for two. Good job of O'Neill not giving up on that one. And that's her fourth foul. <laughs> Asking if the Eagles want the bottom of that. 2.04 to go in the game. 48-36. Shot up and good. O'Neill with nine points. They're in within 11, 2.04 to go. Second shot up and good. So Mike O'Neill makes good from the line. And a timeout called by Coach Arp. Overton wants to talk it over. They're going to take a full timeout with two minutes to go in the game and a 10-point lead, 48-38 over the Mustangs. We'd like to thank everybody who's been bidding on the silent auction online for Colton Crusaders on Facebook. Raising money for cancer research and the end kids cancer. If you would like to bid on the silent auction, go to Facebook and go to Colton's Crusaders. All right, they come back out from the timeout with two minutes to go in the game. The Eagles with five team fouls, the Mustangs with one. I don't know how. No, that's right. That's crazy. So Mustangs with a lot of fouls to give here. And they're kind of coming in with a three-quarter court press. Eklund breaks it down on the right side. Rody on her. Over to Meyer. Now over to Florell. She dribbles a couple times. O'Neal's all over her. Now she gets it back up to Meyer. They're playing a little keep away here out on top. Luther has it into Florell. She takes a dribble over to Eklund. She's going to take a baseline jumper up. Nope. And she's blocked by Addie McFarland, but then Florell gets it. And she's fouled by Ellie Goodhart. And she'll head to the line. Ellie's second. Team second. Don't want to foul them on the shot. If you can foul them before, you know, trying to steal the ball, then all they do is get the ball out. Florell misses the first one. 1.33 to go in the game. Second one she misses too. Mustangs with a chance to cut up to single digits here. Florell caught with a hand check. Well, next one will send the Mustangs to the line for one and one, 16 fouls. Florell's third personal. Minute and 30 to go, 10 points is the difference. 
Nice pass inside to McFarland. She looks to go high low. Back out to Rohde for three. She got it, Abby Rohde, three pointer. And it's a seven point lead, 48-41. The Mustangs fight back, get a three pointer. And now it's a seven point game. All right, so let's see what Coach Rohde draws up here coming out of this timeout. Minute and 20 to go. It's a seven point lead. Mustangs with some really good three point shooters, especially uh, Faith Hernandez. She's got 15 points on threes alone. Abby Rohde just hit one. I know Goodhart can make them. I've seen O'Neill make them. The only one out there that I haven't seen make a three is Addie McFarland, but they need her on the inside to rebound with Fleshman and Eklund, and Ryan. Here they come, got the press on, trying to force a turnover, now they try to trap, they get it to Haley Fleshman, high low to Ryan, and she's fouled by O'Neill, but that's on the floor, so they will get it out underneath, but they won't get shots. Two on Micah, minute 10, so that only took about 10 seconds off the clock. She slaps it, gets it up to Meyer, Faith closes out on her. Now Eklund has it in the corner, double team. Back up to Meyer, they're gonna have to foul or do something. Micah's on her. Gonna have to get a foul here. Have to do something. And a reach call for Faith. That's her first personal. And they'll still have it out on the side. This is where they've gotta get the turnover is when they're trying to inbound the ball. They gotta get tight on the goals and not let them move. And then they get it in easily to Eklund. Back across to Meyer. And she's fouled by Rhodey, but they still aren't going to the line yet. Got two more fouls before they hit the line. Rhodey's fourth foul. Not really the person you want to foul, but 51.6 seconds to go. Down by seven, Mustangs need a turnover here. And they foul Ryan. Not sure who got that one. Well, that's Hernandez, that's good. Rhodey, the only one that can't get another foul, or she's done. They've got to steal the ball, but they're going to let them catch it in the backcourt. And Goodhart fouls her, and now she'll go to the line and shoot one on one. A weird ending to this game. 47.3 seconds to go. Seven point lead for Overton. The boys are lined up there. You can see just past the free throw line for Overton. Their boys are four and 16, and the Mustangs eight and seven. First one up and in for Meyer. That helps a lot. Extends that lead to eight. Three possession game. It's gonna be tough for the Mustangs to come back. They're gonna have to get a quick score. She makes another one. Now it's a three possession game to make all threes. Timeout called. Wanna talk it over? So we'll have two. Uh, I know it's weird, but we have two Class D schools playing next, and the boys, because the Overton boys are Class D2, and the SEM Mustangs are D2, but the girls are C2, and our girls are D2, so it'll be pretty rare. I've never seen SEM be anything but Class D2 in anything, but some of these schools that have that borderline population of student population of boys or girls can fluctuate up and down the whole school doesn't stay at C2. It goes by the girls team or the boys team. So should have a better matchup here in the next game. Although the girls here from SEM have played really good against a great C2 team that we could see down in state and definitely will make some uh, noise here in districts. They get it down the court really quick. Mike O'Neill takes a couple dribbles. She's gonna have to get something up. Throws it up over Fleshman. Addie McFarland ends up with it. Now they're on the deck and it goes out of bounds off of Rhodey. Overton girls help her up and slap her on the back and in a nice way. And Hernandez fouls, almost got the steal. Almost got the steal there. But that'll send Luther to the line for two. Nope, one of one, one of one. And a nine point lead, 34.2 seconds to go.
First one's up and in. Second one, good. And that'll just about do it here. The Mustang's coming down. 30 seconds to go down. Sorry, down 11. Inside to O'Neill. She goes in on Fleshman. This time throws it up. No good. Rebound Eklund. 20 seconds to go. McFarland has him. They're still up there pressing, trying to get a turnover. Easy pass down to Haley Fleshman, and that should just about do it. And Addy gets a foul called with 10 seconds left, and that's pretty much it. I think she was trying to tell her that they wanted to get a foul so that they could check Tessa Atkins in the game, our other senior. Get a little bit of varsity playing time. Overton checks in there, JD, JB. Oh, I take it back. A few years ago, SEM was D1 by one girl. <laughs> so, in volleyball. I couldn't remember it, but somebody online remembered and appreciate that. Crystal Gladder phoning in with the stat. Flashman misses the second one, and that'll pretty much do it here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Tessa Atkins gets her hand on it as the time expires. So after four quarters of play, the Mustangs fall to the Eagles, 53-41 in a good hard-fought battle. The Mustangs played hard, got some good things going, just couldn't outlast, couldn't keep up with the Overton Eagles tonight. Stay tuned for boys' action. The boys' warm-up will begin immediately. In about 20 minutes, we'll have yourself the tip-off between the Overton boys with a 4-16 and record and the SEM Mustangs with that 8-7 and seven record. We're going to draw for the, um, well, you guys aren't here for the split the pot, but for the silent auction, they're going to close the bids for the silent auction at the end of the third quarter of the boys' game. So you've got three more quarters to bid on those silent auction items on Facebook, Colton's Crusaders, online. If you're in on that, keep a close eye on those bids as we... Keep on going. I guess it's a silent auction, so it is what it is. Thanks for tuning in. If you like it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you want to subscribe, we'll be having other events take place here on the SEM Mustangs YouTube channel. I know one thing I'm going to try to get here is our spring concerts streamed. The thing is, I have to get uh, permission from all the publishers of the music that we perform. So far, I have got permission from a couple publishers and one arranger. And I really like that 
they get back to us that quickly and allow us to do those things. So we'll keep on working until we can get enough to have a program and should be pretty awesome. That way you can, and hopefully by then you can still come to the games live or to the games, to the concert live and we'll have it streaming as well. So if anybody's states away, I know one good thing to come out of this COVID thing is that people that live in Florida or California and they've got relatives or nieces, nephews, granddaughters, whatever here in SEM, they can enjoy some of the sporting events and other activities through online access. So we'll try to keep that going for you as much as we can. And we appreciate your continued support.
All right, 11 minutes to go here in the warm-up. Let's go over our starting lineups. First for the visiting Overton Eagles. Number one, a 5'11 junior, Caleb Suavari. 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 I got to need to practice that one. Number five, a 5'7 freshman, Alex Bonzoff. Number 23, a 6'2 junior, Wyatt Ryan. Number 25, a 6'1 freshman, Braden Fleshman. And number 43, a 6'1 senior, Preston Shibley. The Eagles are head coached by Seth Ellers. The Mustangs are going to start number 14, a 6' foot sophomore, Creighton Line. Number 20, a 6'1 sophomore, Noah Eggleston. Number 24, a 6'4 sophomore, Jason Goodhart. Number 30, a 6'2 sophomore, Kellen Eggleston. And number 50, a 6'3 senior, Carson Rohde.
About six minutes to go here in the warm-up where we start our boys' varsity action. We'd like to thank all the Sumner Eddyville Miller Scholars Scholarship supporters. The platinum level, we have Apache Ag LLC in Sumner, Bowie Fertilizer in Miller, Five Points Bank of Sumner, McFarland Seed of Lexington, Pasaka Baker and McFarland in Lexington. Our gold members are the Beatty Family Farms here in Sumner, Eggleston Oil in Oconto, and Capital Electric right here in Sumner, Nebraska. Silver level sponsors are Clark Gladder Farms, Cuts on the Creek, Irwin Painting, Line Ranch, O'Neill Family Farms, Ryder Angus, Rockin' H Ranch, Tubbs Pub, Linda Berman in memory of Gary Berman, Jason and Danny Eggleston family in memory of Colton Eggleston. Of course, that's the silent fundraiser that we're doing, the silent auction online. We'd like to thank everybody who's participated in that so far so they can raise money to end cancer in children. Rody Felker Memorial, Don and Martha Newquist, Bryce and Diana Williams, and Bill and Megan Schmidt. Our bronze members are Bill and Sarah's Cheesecakes, Burr Agripair, Creston Fertilizer, Farmhouse Floral, Miller American Legion Auxiliary number 351, Stevens Welding Shop, The Main Place, Rob and Jennifer Anderson Family, Tim and Janet Burr, Roger and Shelley Dowd, Jared and Madeira Eggleston Family, Pastor Ken and Angie Hudson, Patterson Family, Dirk and Kristen Triplett Family, Larry and Ann Bentley, Todd and Chris Dakey Family, Dan and Sandy Eggleston, Kevin and Heather Finke Family, Riley and Christy Jones Family, Bill and Sarah Scoville Family, and Scott and Jill Williams Family. The SEM Scholars would like to give a special thanks to those listed. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you and go Mustangs. It's not too late to get in on that silent auction. There's gift baskets, candy, decor signs, skin care, flowers, t-shirts. This seems to be kind of aimed towards the ladies. So men, if you haven't got your girl a Valentine's Day present, this would be a good thing for you to do. Go on Facebook to Colton's Crusaders and get a bid in for a Valentine's Day present. And bid high, because you don't want to miss out. Uh, for the seniors' night, we're going to honor our senior, Carson Rohde. I'm going to read what Coach Line has written. For our boys' senior night, we will be honoring one senior, Carson Rohde. Carson has been a four-year starter for our Mustangs and has been recognized many times for his success on the basketball court. He has been named to all conference teams both his sophomore and junior years and has been named to all state honorable mention teams as well. Last season, he averaged a double-double for rebounds and points scored. Carson re re recently reached another honor of scoring over 1,000 points in his career. Please join me in congratulating Carson Rohde and all his success at SEM. I believe that was written by Darby Line. I'm sure it was. A minute and 30 seconds to go before we start this last basketball game of the season here at home for the SEM Mustangs. Sub-districts will start not next week, but the week after. The girls' sub-districts will be Tuesday as the Mustang ladies will take on Brady. I believe Brady has one or two wins on the season, so Mustangs hoping to get on that one, and then they'll play the winner of Loomis 
and somebody else, I'm not sure, but I have a feeling that Loomis and SEM are going to match up again to see who goes to districts in uh, what would be the rubber match between those two teams because each team has won one game on the season. Starting lineup said, and we're getting ready to tip off now. It'll be Carson Rohde against Wyatt Ryan. And Ryan ends up with it. Gets it out to Suavari. Suavari trying to figure out what's going on here up top. Looks to his coach. They call out a play. Now they're going to switch to, I don't know what kind of defense the Mustangs are in, but they get the steal. Carson Rohde bringing it down. A little reverse pivot, has it stolen by Sovari, gets it over to Ryan. Ryan brings it down the right side. Ryan, cross-court pass to Bonzoff. Up, blocked by Noah Eggleston. Back out top, Sovari has it. Now over to Ryan, he head fakes. Cross-court pass. Now into the corner, Sovari for three, no good. Rebound by Fleshman, puts it up and in. Fleshman with the rebound put back on the offside. And that missed shot. Now Eggleston has it on the left side, pass to Creighton line, right in the bottom of the lane, out to Noah for three. He got it, Noah Eggleston! Hits the three-pointer, and the Mustangs take the lead. One minute gone in the game, three to two to score. Suavari stuck at the timeline, gets it across. Good defense by Noah Eggleston here, right in front of us. Now the Twins both trapping, it's a turnover. Goodhart gets it back out to Kellen. Kellen brings down the left side. Good job of uh, defense there by the Mustangs. Noah has it on the right side. Dribbles down into the middle. Gets it over to Carson. Now over to Noah. Noah inside to Creighton. Creighton inside out to Carson. Back over. Flips it to Kellen. Kellen tries to get it to Creighton. A turnover. Fleshman ends up with it. Rody ends up two rows up into the crowd. Tiana O'Neill about got run over. <laughs> Kellen will inbound it. 6.25 to go, three to two, Mustangs on top. Another turnover, Fleshman ends up with it. Push it up the court. The shot by Ryan, up off the rim, no good. Rebound, Goodhart. Jason, long baseball pass to Carson, up to 
Nice bounce pass by Carson to uh, Kellen, who finishes at the bucket. Now we got a little bit of three-quarter court press by the Mustangs. They're up five to two, six minutes to go, a turnover, and that's Bonzoff that's called for the travel. So the Mustangs looking pretty good here early, getting offense out of their defense. Kellen over to Creighton. Creighton at the three-point line, left side. Ooh. Got Ryan on him. Now he picks up his dribble, he's kind of stuck. Kellen comes, helps him out. Gets it over to Noah, his brother. Back over to Kellen. Kellen takes a shot just inside the three-point line, bounces around and goes down. Kellen Eggleston on the board now. Oh, that's his second bucket, so he's up to four. Eggleston's with all the points so far. Shot for the baseline, Kellen got a piece of that. Noah ends up with it. And the Twins are off and running early in this one. Two and a half minutes, a great ball by them. Creighton double teamed on the baseline, trying to get rid of it. Gets it over to Carson, Carson swings it to Kellen for three. No good, off the front of the rim, rebound. Bonds off, he gets it up to Ryan, who takes it down to the baseline, dishes it over to Suavari. He takes the shot, blocked by Goodhart, taken by Noah. Noah, cross-court pass to Creighton for three. No good, rebound, bounced around, and a foul called on Noah Eggleston as he tries to reach. It'll be his first personal and everybody's first. Seven to two the score, five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Carson Rohde comes out, Ryan Harbeth not into the game. Gets a fist bump from Coach Line. And Overton goes back and forth across the timeline now. Tucker Weitzel in the game also. He drives down, stolen by Kellen Eggleston. He goes on the left side. Gets it over to Creighton. Creighton, nice pass over to Tooch. In the corner, thought about a three. Now back over to Creighton. Drives, fakes it, gets it over to Kellen now. And Kellen drives baseline. Nice pass back to Creighton. The shot from the elbow, no good. Rebound Kellen. Good ball movement by the Mustangs. Tucker for three, no good. Rebound Ryan. Boy, unselfish ball movement tonight so far for the Mustangs. Nice move by Fleshman. He gets it up and in. He's got four. All of the uh, Overton points. Scramble for the ball. Goodhart ends up with it. Drives in the lane. Blocked by Ryan. Ryan comes out of the pack. Kellen almost got the steal. Now into the corner. The shot up. Three-pointer. No good. And Eggleston called for the push. It looked like he just jumped higher than Fleshman and got it over, but some of the... It's hard not to call over the back. <laughs> Even though there's no such thing as over the back. Only if there's contact made. Some good ball early, and Rody checks back in. So it's Noah, Carson, Jason, Tucker, and Creighton. The starters with Tucker in there. A nice shot from the side by Swarov. Rebound, Goodhart. Jason dribbles it down, now gets it over to Tucker. Tucker bringing it down left side. Back over to Jason, Jason to Tucker. Tucker thought about a three. Now he drives right, dishes it over to Noah. Noah will take the three, it looked good, no good. But Carson Rohde's there for the rebound and put back. Nine to four, Mustangs by five. Ryan has it down the right side. Now we get it back. Now back over to Ryan again on the right side, breaks the timeline. He's got it to Bonds off. Bonds off to Ryan, Ryan to Bonds off. The three pointer by Bonds off up. Way short air ball, but Savari just comes flying in from the top and gets a rebound. Trying to get it to Flashman, he gets it to him. Now back out to Savari, he looks at the three, goes around to Eggleston, puts up a floater on the baseline, no good, gets his own rebound. Gets it back out to Ryan at the free throw line, he puts it up and in. Need to rebound a little bit better if they want to stay in that game. Just under three to go, nine to six, Mustangs. Nice pass inside to Jason, and his head fake got the kid in the air. Oh, Creighton rattled home a three, uh, but it was after the foul call. Fouls on number 43, Preston Shively is first, team's first. Nine to six, the score, Mustangs up by three. Rody slaps the ball underneath. They move, they get it out to Noah, he gets it over to Creighton. Now back to Noah, back to Creighton. Tries to get inside to Rody. Kind of loses possession, but gets it back. Gets his own rebound, puts it up, and will go to the line for two, fouled by Preston Shively. Now his second personal. Noah Eggleston set to check, I'm sorry, Kellen Eggleston set to check back in. 
as Rohde steps to the line for two. First one's up and in. Nice shot by Carson Rohde. Good stroke from the line. We're going to miss this senior next year. The lone senior on the team. Only two girls seniors as far as that goes. So young teams and Rohde hits two. Free throws. He's got four points. Ian Kellen lead all Mustang scorers. 11 to 6 to score. 2.30 to go in the first quarter. Mustangs starting out with a bang here in this ball game. Fleshman has it on the right wing. Oh, who's that that just checked in? That looks like Cody Schubert. Also got Caden Wallace in there for Overton. Silvari has it over to Fleshman. He's going to take a three over Noah. No good. Oh, that was Kellen. Is Noah just got the rebound. Hard to tell these twins apart. Nice pass by Kellen. High low into Carson Rohde. He takes it up and scores the bucket. You give Carson Rohde the ball on the the block, and you're probably not going to stop him. Ooh, Tucker Weitzel almost comes up with a steal on Wallace. He gets it to Savari. Now over to Ryan. Ryan, baseline jumper over Goodhart. Good. Wyatt Ryan with four points. 13 to 8. Overton's hanging tough. Three-pointer in the corner by Kellen. No good. Rebound, Overton. They push it up the right side now. Bad pass. Oh, they just got it by Jason. Missed opportunity there. Slavari has it up top. Takes a deep breath. They've got Noah on him. They try to pick him off. They get it back over to Ryan. Ryan with a shot in the middle of the lane is good. He just out jumped Goodhart. Shot right over the top of him. He's got six points, 13 to 10. And the Eagles starting to come back into this thing with just about a minute to go here in the first quarter. Get it over to Noah. Noah far side to Tucker. Tucker waits for Kellen to cut. Nice pass. It misses the shot in the lane, but Goodhart gets it back, takes it up, and he'll go to the line for two. Boy, they could be getting some and ones in there, just not getting those close buckets to go. Let's hope that luck changed. Suvari with his first. Suarvari. Love that name. 54.3 seconds to go. Mustangs with a three-point lead, 13 to 10, as Goodhart misses the first one. Creighton back into the game now for Noah. See a lot more teamwork early here in this first quarter than we have in the last couple games. That's good to see. Second one no good, so nothing out of that. Under a minute, and Overton could tie it with a three. Nice pass inside, and he puts it up and in. Cody Schubert with a nice uh, up and under. Good pass into him as well. And there's a one point lead now for the Mustangs. Creighton gets it on the baseline, drives in, gets it over to Carson. Carson over to Kellen. Kellen drives baseline, and he's bodied out of bounds. That'll be a foul. That one looks like it's on Schubert. Nope. It is on Wallace, his first. Team is fourth. 28 seconds to go in the quarter. Mustangs on top by one. Tucker gets a three point line over to Kellen, over to Creighton. Now he drives right side over to Jason. Jason looks, tries to get it back to Creighton on the baseline, gets it, but he's double teamed. Takes a dribble, gets it back to Jason. Jason comes over all the way across to Tucker at the three point line, 13 seconds. Tries to pass it to Rhodey, goes right through his hands and out of bounds. Good idea, maybe just too hard of a pass. Not sure, 11.6 seconds to go. Mustangs up by one, 13-12. They could take their first lead of the ball game here. Overton with a score. Nice tip by Kellen. Knocks it out of bounds with 6.6 .6 seconds to go in the first and a one point lead. Ryan gonna inbound it. He's got it deep in the corner here. Gets it into Slavari. He's got Creighton and Jason on him. Tries to get it to Ryan. If he would have, he'd have had a great shot. One second, he throws up the shot, no good. A oh, desperation heave by Wallace. And that ends the first quarter. So after one quarter of play, the score of 13-12 SEM. They had a nice lead there early in the first, but the Overton Eagles came back late in the first. Let's see what the Mustangs will come out with here in the second half, second quarter. Woo, it's been a long week. You ever have one of those weeks that feel like two and one? This year with all the COVID protocol and all the different things we have to do as teachers. I was talking to some of the uh, FKC conference music teachers at FKC band clinic or honor band clinic yesterday, which was, by the way, incredible down in Elwood. 
able to socially distance over 100 kids in a big gym and play some fantastic music. I'll tell you what, if you, <laughs> there's nothing like live music. I mean, I like to record and I like to be able to upload those things onto the internet, but I'm telling you, there's nothing like hearing a 100-piece band in person. It moved people emotionally too, so. Uh, if you get a chance to go to anything like that, take advantage of it. Just take advantage of it, because you'll remember what you're missing. It's been a year. It's been a long year. But uh, it's nice to see some things starting to open up again. All right, the Mustangs are going to start with possession here. I'll finish my thought later. Kellen over to Tucker. Tucker for three. No good. Rebound. Swabari. Comes down the left side. He's got Kellen on him, tight defense, over to Ryan. Ryan with the shot, up, no good, rebound Rody. Rody over to Tucker and they're out on the break. Trying to find a way to get it inside to Jason, knocked away, he was about quadruple teamed there. And Carson Rody with a good speed, he's gonna end up getting called for a foul, I don't know about that, pretty tick attack. I thought he outran it. I think the ref didn't think there was any way that Carson could get in front of that. But as we know from watching Carson in football, he can move quick for a big guy. And it looked like he got ahead of that, but doesn't matter what I think. The ref called it a foul. So here we are. Four to three in team fouls. Overton with four. Three-pointer up by Swavari. It's good in the corner. Swavari with his first points of the game. And now Overton with the lead, 15-13. Mustangs really need this win to get a good seed in the sub-districts. Kellen on the baseline, nice pass over to Jason, who's right underneath the basket. Over in the corner and a three second call. Jason didn't get it, cleared the lane in time. Kellen hit the three, but to no avail. Some mental mistakes here early in the second quarter. We have to clean this up. Coach Line tries to send some positive encouragement their way. And Ryan brings it down across the timeline. 6.50. Going the second quarter, 15-13, Mustangs down two. And a three-pointer up by Savari, no good. Rebound Noah, and he's fouled. That's a consistent call, because they did call that on us, so. Good consistent call, Bonds, Bonds off will come away with that foul. Five team fouls on the Eagles. 6.38 to go in the half. Creighton has it, now over to Noah. Noah, one dribble over to Jason. Jason, cross court to Creighton. Creighton drives the baseline, puts it up, acrobatic move, and gets a bucket. And Creighton on the scoreboard with his first two. Steal by Kellen. He brings it down to the middle, all the way in with the left hand, up no good, rebound Ryan. Oh, he was all the way to the bucket, but that left hand on the left side's a tough one. And he was coming across the basket too, so a double extra hard shot. Stolen by Creighton. Creighton's got two guys to beat. Comes in and throws one up into the arm of number five, Alex Monzoff, who will pick up his second personal. Nice show of respect by the uh, Overton Eagle team, both players helping Creighton up off the court. Seen that in the JV game and the girls game as well, so appreciate the Overton Eagles teaching their Student athletes, good sportsmanship. We need to see more of that in today's basketball and sports just all across the board, quite honestly. Arbuthnot checks in for a good heart. Lion's second one's up and in, so he hits both of his free throws. And now the Mustangs up by two, 17-15, and they're putting a little bit of a press here on Overton, but they get it across the timeline fairly easily. They got him, Bonzoff's trapped in the corner, both twins. And it was knocked out of bounds by SEM. I wasn't quite sure what the call was, waiting for the ref. And so Suvari will inbound it, gets it over to Bonzoff, now over to Fleshman. He takes a three, misses, and Arbuthnot with good position. Right. Okay, Ryan called for the foul. I don't agree with that either. He was on the back of him, but he didn't touch him. That's not a foul. But to be fair, they called it that way on us. So at least they're consistent. That's all you can really ask for. And that'll put the Mustangs in the bonus. 
And they'll go to the line and shoot one and one. So Ryan Arbuthnot will go to the line trying to extend a two point lead. 5.32 to go in the half. Shots up and good. Nice job of hitting the front end of a one and one. Extra points, I mean, one point can mean a lot in these close games with these two schools just 15 miles apart. Second shot up, also good. The freshman coming off the bench with two clutch free throws. And he extends the lead to four, 19-15. Swabari almost double teamed, but he manages to dribble out of it. Gets it over to Bonzoff, he'll bring it out top. Ryan tries to set the pick on Creighton. Kind of shouldered into him, but not much contact there. Get it over to Fleshman in the corner. Now back up top. Pawns off, back across. Now Fleshman has it again in the corner. Mustangs 2-3 zone, adjusting well to the ball movement by Overton. Looks like they're gonna dare Fleshman to take that shot. He doesn't look like he wants to, but maybe he will here. He dribbles inside the three. Now he passes it back on top. Ravari has it up on top. They're looking for a hole in the defense. Not much there. A pick set by Ryan off the backboard. No good. They say it goes off of SEM and out of bounds. Kellen doesn't like that, but he just smiles and goes back, sets position, gets in front of Ryan. They set a little bit of a movement here between players. Fleshman has it on the baseline. Three-point line extended. Now back up on top. Savari has it. Tries to pass it across. Lazy pass picked by Kellen. Kellen has it up the left side. He doesn't have numbers, so he pulls it out wisely. I thought he might try to take it in there, one on three, but good head on his shoulder there to pull it out and get our numbers back. Pass all the way across to Creighton for three. Oh, just missed it. Tipped around. Ryan ends up with it. Falls out of bounds. And it'll be Mustang ball. So good hustle all around. That ball couldn't find possession of anybody and ended up getting kicked out of bounds there by Wallace. Subs into the game for the Mustangs. Ryan and Kellen will have a seat. Tucker and Jason will come in. Carson to inbounds with 4.06 to go in the half. Nice inbound went over the basket to Jason who was right on the other side of the rim. He puts it up off the backboard and in. And it's 21-15. Mustangs finally starting to get control a little bit of this ball game. A tip ball, turnover. Jason has it. They've got numbers. They get it up to Creighton. Creighton over to Tucker. Tucker finishes at the hoop. Good ball movement. Unselfish play by the Mustangs. You can see it's not a one or two, three person game out there for the Mustangs tonight. Whoever's open and is the best chance to take a shot, they're getting the ball. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what number it is, doesn't matter what your last name is. They're doing a great job of spreading the ball around, finding the person who has the best chance to score, and that person's putting it up and in, and that's why they're ahead, 23 to 15, here late, well, midway through the second quarter. That's exciting to me when you see a team, especially at this time of the year, this is when you need your team to be cohesive. You need them to have good teamwork. You need to have them looking for the best opportunity to score. Not who can score, not, you know, let's not set up one person and make sure they always get the shot. It's who can make the shot the closest to the bucket or the most open shot. Take your percentages and go with that. They're doing a great job with us early. Let's see how they manage to close out this first half. This will tell a lot about the way the rest of the game will go. Ryan to inbound, three-quarter court press. 1-3-1, one, one, set up by the Mustangs. Get it into Silvari, back to Ryan. Ryan over to Bonzoff, back to Ryan. Silvari, they just kind of going back and forth. Now he's straddling the timeline, gets it down to Fleshman. Over to Ryan, down the middle, gets it up, no good. Rebound, Rody has it knocked away. Overton ends up with it. On the baseline. Shively ends up on the floor with Rody and it's a jump ball. It'll be stay with the Eagles. 
Shively and Rody both with the headbands on down there. Rody's is white, Shively's is blue. Get it into Ryan, over to Fleshman. You know he's coming into the corner, they cut that off so they have to go back right. Now they hit Shively, or, uh, Sovari for three and he nails it. Nice catch and shoot by Caleb Sovari. He's got six points, both threes. Creighton drives down the other end, he turns it over, bad pass. Bond's out there to steal it. 23-18, Mustangs by five. They need to stop here and get down and score. Trying to overplay those passing lanes, but Overton just able to barely get those passes in without getting a hand on them. So far, he just about traveled there. Gets it to Bonds off in the corner for three, and it's good. 23-21. Eagles right back into this thing with 2.35 to go in the quarter and the half. Mustangs need a score here to put the stop the bleeding. And who do you give it to when you need a score? Carson Rohde on the baseline, backs him in, puts it up and in. Let's see if they can get a stop here. 25-21 now, just over two to go in the half. Get down to Bonds off. Now he's over to Ryan. Ryan across to Savari. They don't want him to shoot a three. They double him. Fleshman's got it outside the three-point line. Now over to Bonzoff. Bonzoff to Suavari. Oh, he has it knocked up in the air. There's a scramble on the ground. Oh, a diving effort. And that's Noah Eggleston that hit the deck, and he knocks it out of bounds. Everybody seems to be okay. That's good news. That'll be Overton ball under two minutes to go here. Creighton doing a good job of face shielding Suvari. Get it into Fleshman, back to Ryan. Suvari has it, they're gonna have to slow him down a little bit. He's been having the hot hand here lately. Fleshman has it up top, now over to Ryan. Ryan, ball fake, takes a little shot from the elbow, up no good. Rebound, knocked around, taken by Creighton line. He pushes the ball up to Noah, Noah comes down, he's got all five players are back, so he pulls it out. And, uh, Creighton works the left side, gets it over to Tucker. Tucker with three guys on him, and somehow he gets a pass into Rody. Rody tries to go over to Goodhart, stolen by Fleshman. Now they're telling him to hustle back, but kind of manning up there. Shot up and no good by Bonzoff, rebounded by Noah. And then he'll dribble it down over to Creighton. Under a minute now, over to Tucker. Tucker, if he can get a good catch and shoot three, he'll take it. Three-pointer up by Creighton, no good. Rebound, Rody up and in. Good job, Carson Rody, getting making space in there. He's got 10 now. And he leads the Mustang scorers. And definitely, Rody is by far the biggest player out there on both teams. And if they can consistently get it to him on the block, there's really nothing that Overton can do. All they can do is try not to foul him and hope he misses. 27-21, 36.1 seconds to go in the half. And Mustangs in the bonus. Not a lot of fouls, only 10 total fouls this half. Savari over to Fleshman, takes a dribble over to Ryan in the corner. He's got a little room, so he takes advantage of the baseline, throws up the jumper, no good, rebound Rody. He almost loses it, but gets it up to Creighton. Creighton over to Noah, and they're gonna pull it back out. 15 seconds to go in the half. Noah starts to move right. Timeout, 13.3 to go in the half. Coach Line wants to draw something up, see if they can't get another score before the break. So coming off that last timeout, Overton came out and scored a couple quick threes. They were right back into it, and then the Mustangs started to pull away again. A good defense and taking some good offensive shots, being able to get the ball inside to Rody where he can just back you down and get those easy jumpers using the window. He's great against the glass underneath. And of course, he's got size, speed, quickness, and uh, plenty of touch. So, see if the Mustangs continue to take advantage of that or if they'll go with a hot-handed uh, hot Eggleston out on the wing. Tucker Weitzel also has yet to make a bucket. He's probably ready for one. Oh, he did hit one, I guess. 13.3 to go, 27-21, here we go. Noah over to Creighton, Creighton over to Carson. Nine, eight, back to Noah. Noah takes a three, no good. Backside rebound, fought for. 
Oh, and with one second, Creighton took a shot. It looked, Tucker was out of bounds. So one second even, there's really no, you can't shoot with one second left. And I'll pass it across court to Bonsoff. He gets it stuffed. <laughs> Jason Goodhart's like, no, I don't even want you to shoot it. I don't even want you to have a shot at it. So he stuffs him in the, at about three-quarter court. <laughs> don't see that very often. And here we are at halftime. So we're going to do a little drawing here for the split the pot. And remember, you can still bid on those uh, silent auction items on Facebook, Colton's Crusaders, for uh, until the third quarter ends of this boys game. And so once the end of the third quarter is there, they're going to stop taking bids on that silent auction, and they'll announce the winners of those auction items. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in on the SEM Mustangs YouTube channel. Um, to finish a thought I had earlier, you know, it seems like with all the COVID things that teachers have to do and just all the extra, I mean, as soon as a class leaves, I've got to spray down every chair and every teacher does it. We have to make sure things are stay six feet apart if possible, make sure masks are staying on, up over your nose, make sure we, uh, use hand sanitizer and all that stuff, which, you know, it just takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a little more planning for things. And uh, you get to about Wednesday night after work, and it, it feels like Friday. It feels like you've had a whole day of work or a whole week of work, and it's just Wednesday night. We were talking about that at that FKC honor band, and uh, it was pretty much a consensus that. Those last few days of the week are a real struggle. So glad to get to a Friday today and glad that we have something to look forward to with these uh, sports games. And like you can you can see on the other side there, we've got more fans that are allowed to come in and you can just feel the energy and the camaraderie and people are starting to feel more comfortable. You've been cramped up forever. And I know you guys at home are still down there and we appreciate you guys keeping everybody safe. I mean, if everybody came out, there's no way we'd be able to keep it 75%, so. They're gonna announce the split the pot here. Kyler just came up and got the mic, Kyler Jones. And I'll let you know on here who won that in case somebody got somebody to get them a ticket at home. And Shana Beatty has the mic. And she's about to go out. Okay, it takes a second. Pot, All right, here come the ticket numbers. We are raising money for 2021. This is for 2021 SEM post prom. Due to COVID, they haven't been able to do a lot of fundraising, so they appreciate everybody being able to support tonight. They raised $400, so the split the pot will be 200 bucks. That's one of the best split the pots I've heard. Kyler Jones is picking. Her brother is a junior. Reese. Cohen and Preston Beatty are sweeping the floor here. And she draws the ticket. A little drum roll by the cheerleaders. Six four. Three six one. Three six one. And it's an Overton fan. Oh wait, no. Who is it? I think they might have donated it back, actually. Wow, what a great sign of, uh, geez, that's incredible. 
an Overton fan wins it and gives it back. Wow, that's amazing. Cool, so $400 raised tonight for a post-prom. Thanks, Tyler. Very cool. Oh, whoops. They'll, they, they'll get it back up. All right, so just a little over five minutes to go in the half before we continue this game with the Mustangs on top 27-21 over the Overton Eagles here in the boys' varsity action. The girls fall to Overton. Well, my cheat sheet with my stats just fell down into the Overton fan base, so I guess that's gone. <laughs> but I do have my other stat sheet of the actual game, not the uh, state rankings and stats. I do remember that, let's see, there were a couple Overton guys on the, maybe one for either rebounds or scoring, and Mustangs don't have anybody in rebounds or scoring in the top 50 in D2. So there wasn't much written on there anyway, except for the wins that the SEM Mustangs have and the wins that the Overton Eagles have. So as I look at our stat lines here across, it looks like we've got uh, two points for Tucker Weitzel, four points for Creighton Line, five points for Noah Eggleston, Two for Jason Goodhart. Hmm, maybe three for Noah. That one I was a little sketchy on. Kellen's got four. Ryan's got two. And Carson Rohde leading the Mustang scorers with ten. Suavari for Overton with six points, all three pointers. Bonds off with a three. Schubert with one inside. Wyatt Ryan with six points. Fleshman with four. And that's the scoring for... Overton. Of course, the jersey, basketball jersey for Eli Dehart. Hanging on the chair at the end of the bench, just like it is for every uh, ball game. I did see online his mom went and got a sandwich somewhere, and the sandwich she ordered was 44, and she said, well... You can always tell Eli is still, still with us. Things like that happen. That was his basketball number. Of course, the number of the jersey on, de displayed down there. So pretty cool things happening. Just tragic uh, accident, and you know, everybody's hurting from it. It's nice to have a community that can come together and support his life and celebrate everything about Eli and be supportive for his family and for all the members of our community. So the Mustangs really need this win so that they can get tonight for our sub-district tournament. The higher the seed, the lower team you play. So obviously if you want that one or two seed, so you play the three or four. Just under two minutes to go here in halftime, and then we'll kick off our second half of action and see if the Mustangs can hang on and defeat the visiting Overton Eagles tonight. Make sure you guys stay warm out there. If you don't have to leave, don't do it. Of course, everybody's tired of hearing that anyway with COVID and everything else, but now it's a double whammy. I'll tell you what, a shirt, tie, and slacks are a bad combo in minus zero weather. Got back from the FKC honor band clinic. I took one step outside of the bus and told the kids grab your instrument and go inside. We're not unloading the marimba. We're not unloading the, the stands. We can get those tomorrow. It'll be fine. <laughs> then I wore insulated leggings, blue jeans, long sleeve shirt, a shirt over that shirt, coat, gloves, and we unloaded this morning. <laughs> All right, less than a minute to go before we get started with the second half. 
Coaches got their teams in the huddles, give them last second instructions. Mustangs stack it up with the fists in the air, no contact. And they say Mustangs come out. Overton still in their huddle. Coach talking to the starters that are sitting on the bench right now. Pretty animated over there. Mustangs will start with the ball. Going towards their bench right in front of us over here on the left side of your screen. And here we go. 27-21, Mustangs with the lead. Looking to secure their second straight win. Just beat Twin Loop earlier this week. Looking to get on a little bit of a run before they go into the sub-districts. Get going here. Noah has it. Going inside to Jason. He's double teamed. Back out to Creighton. Almost stolen. He gets by him. Kellen with a mid-range jumper. No good. Carson saves it, but it saves it to Overton. He gets it up to Fleshman. He juggles it. Goes up. And he's fouled. Foul on Kellen Eggleston. Be his first. Wait, his second. Sorry, I was on the wrong stat sheet. I'll throw that one away. That's JB. Fleshman to the line for two. Cut the lead. First one bounces around. It was out, and then it went back in. Not sure how that happened. Something to do with Newton's law, I suppose. Second shot's up. No good. Rebound Ryan, though. Chance to get more buckets. Suavari for three. A four-point turnaround in that one. And the Mustangs only ahead by two now. Creighton line dribbles baseline. He's double teamed. He's stuck. No dribble. Gets it off to Carson. Carson picks about a three. Drives the lane up and in. Carson Rohde making his presence known again. He's got 12. They needed that. Back up to a four-point lead. Just about a minute gone here in the quarter. Fleshman all by himself for three. He could have drove all the way to the basket, but he took the three and missed it. Kellen rebounded it. Good news for the Mustangs on that possession. Over to Creighton. Let's see if they can get something inside to Rohde. They set the pick on Noah. Noah over to Creighton. Creighton, baseline jumper. It's good. They wouldn't give him the top of the key, so he took what they gave him, and that was the baseline jumper. Nailed it. Swavari all the way in, fouled by a Creighton line. Or Carson. Nope, Creighton. His first personal. 6.35 to go. Mustangs up 31-25. They get a stop here. They could start extending that lead and get where they could be a little bit more comfortable. Savari gets it in. No, he doesn't. It's stolen by Creighton Line as he tries to get it to Bonsoff. Somebody coming from behind, but he gets the pass off to Kellen. No bucket. Fleshman fouls him on the ground. That'll be his first. Team's first. And you can see the physicality starting to... Whoa, that was on Shively. That's his third. So Fleshman does not pick up that one. I'll take that back. Mustangs inbound it. Creighton has it at the top. Gets it over to Jason. He's outside the three-point line. Coach Line tells him to move. They are pretty stagnant right now. Get it over to Kellen. Now back to Noah. Now over to Creighton in the corner for three. Oh, he misses, but he gets his own rebound. And they're going to call it travel. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know about that one. 31-25, 6-11 to go in the quarter. And a full court press here by the Mustangs. Knocked up, but Shively, or, uh, Silvari gets it back. Over to Ryan. Ryan now breaks the timeline. He's got Jason Goodhart on him, moving those feet quick. 6-4 guys got a lot of quickness in those feet. Ryan all the way to the bucket, up, no good. Rebound, Shively fouled by Goodhart. He's got all ball. That's a tough one. Well, that'll send Shively to the line for two. Can't say something nice, don't say anything at all, so we'll be silent as he shoots these free throws. Ball don't lie, misses the first. Six 
Second one's no good. Rohde gets the rebound. He ends up on the deck, but he gets it off in time. Noah DeKellen all the way in. He gets, should have got the foul and the shot, but he got the shot to go. Thank goodness. 33-25. Mustangs playing tough D again. Shively ends up with it. Almost end up in the lap of Kellen Eggleston. Bonzoff has it in the quarter. Mustangs playing really fast D right now. Good quick movement. They're staying low, shuffling feet. Nice pass inside to Shively. He takes the shot way over. Ryan on the other side gets the rebound and puts it back in. Just in the right place at the right time, Wyatt Ryan scores that one. 33-27, six-point lead. Eggleston in the corner for three. Kellen no good. And rebounded by Swavari. He's got numbers two on one against Noah. Passes it to Fleshman, up and in. Overton on a run, timeout. Darby Line wants to talk it over with five minutes to go in the third quarter. 33-29, Overton's cut the lead to four. 30-second timeout. Don't forget, at the end of this quarter, they will stop all the silent auction bids. If you've ever bid on anything on eBay or any auctions, you know the last bid is the one that gets it eBay. Well, all the time, I guess. The person who, team who scores the most points wins. Okay, Captain Obvious. All right, Coach Lyon tells him to pass the ball. Look for those guys that are wide open. The looks are there, we just gotta be patient. We gotta find those men. And the Mustangs wind up with the ball, only up by five, four. And 4.56 and counting to go in the third. Creighton brings it down. They leave him wide open. He gets it over to Noah. Now Noah hits a cutting Jason. He was open. Shively's all over him. Nice pass to Creighton. Ooh, he might have hit his head when he fell. Ouch. I'm not sure if Ryan got him or what. I didn't really see the contact, but the foul was called anyway. So that'll be Ryan's second personal. Team second. Creighton will go to the line for two. Hopefully he's all right. Seems to be okay. Just messed his hair up a little bit. Creighton could shoot free throws in his sleep, so he makes the first one. 4.44 to go, 34.29. Second one up. Oh, just short. I think I jinxed him. Swavari brings it down. Still got that 1-3-1 one, one trap going on for the Mustangs. And it's stolen by Rody. Gets it up to Creighton. Creighton's got a guy over to his right. Passes it to him. Noah Eggleston finishes. Unselfish play again. Working for the Mustangs. 36-29. Let's see if they can get a stop. Shively has it inside. Almost travels. Gets it to Ryan on the baseline. He's bodied up. And they'll call that foul. It'll be Kellen's third. And that's the only player with more than one foul for the Mustangs. Shively has three, four, Overton. They inbound it to Ryan. Ryan over to Fleischman. Gets it over to Solari. Drives the lane. Triple teamed over to Fleischman. Kind of passing it around the top here. The Mustangs doing a good job of getting their hands in the passing lane. Look over to Bonds off. Over to Solari. Hits Fleischman in the corner. They're going to let him shoot that. He doesn't want it. Back to Solari. Over to Ryan. Ryan to Bonds off. Ooh, he's bodied out of bounds. I can't believe that wasn't a foul. He must have lost it on the ba on the line before the contact. Okay, Overton retains possession, and we don't get a foul, so that's good. Suari for three, throws it up there, no good. Shively trying to grab it. Kellen Eggleston's on the floor. Try to call a timeout, but it's a jump ball. Darby's trying to call a timeout, but the ref wouldn't give it to him for some reason. He, he, he definitely had possession of the ball. Anyway, Overton ends up with it off the jump ball, but the Mustangs will have possession. Three-pointer up by Bonzoff. That's been good. Bonzoff with six points, and now the lead only four again. 3.30 to go in the quarter. And Savari gets a hand on the pass from Noah to Creighton. Mustangs look a little tired out there. Let's see if they can suck it up here for the last half of this third quarter. 
Inside to Rody, high low to Goodhart. He takes a dribble, puts it up. He's fouled. Quick call by the ref on that one. Mike got hit in the face. Looks like maybe might have caught one to the nose. Yep. Jason might have caught one in the nose. You can see his eyes watering a little bit. That foul's on Flesh, Fleshman is first. Let's see if Jason can get something out of these. The first one, geez, in and out. Bummer, that was close. Wallace comes in for Fleshman. He'll have a seat here. 319 to go in the quarter. Mustangs up four, 36, 34. Team fouls, four to three. Mustangs with four. Overton with three. Second one's up and good. So Goodhart gets one out of two. And that's all right. Five point lead. And that one, three, one. Mustangs moving in unison. Steal by Kellen. Gets it up to Carson. Carson left side. Now he dribbles it across front. Goes back to Creighton. And they're going to reset their offense. Nice steal on the bottom side by Kellen. And a quick pass up to Carson. Fast break wasn't there, so they pulled it back out. Noah thought about a three over to Creighton. Now back to Noah. Inside to Carson. Carson over to Kellen. Nice touch on the baseline jumper. Kellen Eggleston with eight points. And the Mustangs extend that lead to 39-32. They can get another stop here in this quarter strong. And it's knocked out of bounds by Noah. And the Mustangs, just like that, back up to a lead. 39-34, 39-32, my bad. Wallace over to Silvari. Dribbles around, goes left hand over to Bonsoff. He just hit a three. He could have had a wide open one there, but chose not to take it. And Ryan has it stolen by Carson. He gets it up to Creighton, but Savari steals it from Creighton. Now Savari has it on the break. Over to Bonsoff, threw his hands and out of bounds. Well, I'm losing my voice. 2.20 to go in the third quarter. 39-32, Mustangs with the ball, looking to add to that lead. Get it up to Creighton, almost lost it. Tried to get it inside to Kellen. Off Kellen and out of bounds. Kellen slaps his chest, said that's my fault. Tries to give him five as he walks by Creighton. I mean, they both tried to give each other five. They just have bad aim. <laughs> Savari gets it back to Ryan. 1-3-1, one, three, one, three-quarter court press on. Savari gets it over there. They get him to pick up his dribble. He has a tip, but, ooh, they got it. And now this time Creighton ends up with it. Nice slap away for Creighton. Takes it all the way in, up and under. Circus shot again for line. And he's got nine. 41-32, Mustangs by nine. Now they're starting to build a nice little lead. Bonsoff gets it underneath. He's double teamed and fouled by Noah. Good foul, he got his money's worth out of that one. Minute 43 to go in the quarter. That's a fifth team foul. That's Noah's second personal. And Creighton will come out for Tucker. Good job of Creighton. Doing a good job of possessing the ball. Tucker on Bonds off. Pass goes over to Ryan. Ryan for three. No good. Air ball. Off the backboard. No rim. Kellen ends up corralling the missed shot. Gets it over to Noah. Now they're going to set up. They're a little small. Well, they got two big guys. But when you take Tucker in for Creighton, you lose a little size. Nice. Good ball fake by Kellen to get the player in the air and have the patience to wait. And he's got 10 now. Kellen Eggleston into double digits. And so is the Mustangs' lead, 11 points. Oh, foul on Kellen. Boy, ticky tack And that's his fourth. That's a bummer, but he knows he's coming out. They're going to need him in the fourth quarter for sure. They've got that 11-point lead now, so we Mustangs doing exactly what I was hoping they would do and finishing the third quarter strong. They still got a minute 10 here. Let's see what they can do. They definitely have the momentum. And that 1-3-1 one, one zone all the way down the court. Three-pointer up and in. Good confident shot by Cody Schubert. And let's see how the Mustangs respond. Creighton has it down here. Over to Noah now. Carson has it at the free throw line. Dribbles a couple times, gets it back to the wing to Noah. Noah tries to get it inside, tipped away. And Noah tries to save it. Gets it to Carson, Carson to Tucker. Tucker up and under. Tucker Weitzel just about dunked it on that baseline. New development, I've watched Tucker Weitzel dunk the ball three times now. Just not in a game yet. He's getting close. They drive the shot up, no good. And there's gonna be a foul on Rody as Flashman 
Does a good job of getting his body in position and getting that rebound. Rody's second personal, team's seventh, so he'll go to the line for one and one. 24.7 seconds to go and a 10 point lead for the Mustangs. It's really been back and forth between like five point leads and 10 point leads here in the second half. Uh, he misses the one and one and Goodhart gets a rebound, gets it up to Noah. They're gonna slow it down for the last shot, 20 seconds. 18, 17, 16, they're gonna set a screen. He goes off the screen, they switch, the defenders switch. So now Creighton's got Suvari on him. That's a mismatch. Now Carson gets it underneath. Swatted away by Ryan. Stolen by Bar or, uh, Wallace. Gets it up. The shot right at the buzzer. I'm not sure if that would have been good or not. But that ends the quarter. A 10-point lead for the Mustangs going into quarter number four. The Mustangs playing some really hard defense. Definitely some inspired ball. I don't know what happened in practice this week, but this is a whole different... Looking team than the one that played Amherst in our last home game. 45-35, the team fouls are seven to three. Mustangs with seven, of course. And it's, uh, they're in the bonus, they'll be in the bonus for the fourth quarter, everything will be. All right, so Carson Rohde with 12 points. He, uh, we haven't seen a lot from him here in the second half yet. Kellen Eggleston has put together a nice little run. He's got 10. Creighton's got nine. The main scores for the Mustangs. Ryan has eight. Uh, Savari with three threes has nine. Uh, he's the high scorer for Overton. So most of their points actually coming from the three-point line. They have three... Six, six three-pointers and eight two-pointers. So. Creighton, I don't know if Overton knew which direction they were going, but the Mustangs ended up getting it down to Carson Rohde, who scored on the baseline, and now they're up. He's got 14 points. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I got my stat sheet back from an Overton fan. 47-35 the score. 10 seconds gone in the fourth quarter. Mustangs in that 1-3-1 one, one, half court trap. Extended to three quarters, stolen by Carson Rohde. Good hand, taking it all the way down on Suari. Puts it up and in. Suari didn't want anything to do with that. He just got out of the way. 16 for Carson Rohde. His last senior night for SEM. His last home basketball game ever here at SEM. He wants to make the best of it. And he's got a game high 16 points. Ryan gets the inbound. Over to Safari, he head fakes back to Ryan. Ryan over in the corner to Wallace. He's closed out on by Tucker. Now Carson comes over to double team. They get it back to Ryan. Nice pass inside to Fleshman. They found the hole in the zone. Got it up and in. Fleshman with nine points now. And Creighton, he finds a hole. Nobody had him. He just drove all the way in and took the easy bucket. So a missed assignment there by the Overton Eagles, and the Mustangs score right away. Creighton with 11 points, he's into double figures. Seven minutes to go in the ball game. 51-37, and a foul called on Savari after he had it stolen from him by either Creighton or Noah. Noah ended up with the ball, but not sure who swatted it. So the Mustangs will have it out on the side. Savari's second personal, team's fourth. The foul issues really for Overton, Shively has three and he just checks into the game. Creighton drives it in, has it stolen from behind. Ryan has it on the fast break now. He doesn't have numbers, tries to get in. Noah does a great job of knocking it out of bounds. And the Eagles will have it underneath the basket with 6.48 to go in the game. They're down 51-37. They need something big time right now. Rody's gonna check out and Ryan Arbuthnot comes in. So Carson Rody is 16 points. They want him to be rested for this last half of the second or the fourth quarter. Bonzoff has it. And we got a hold on. Oh, it was on the pick. Yeah, that was Ryan. He's kind of been getting away with that, but that was a good job by the ref to pick that up. His third personal, team's fifth. And here comes the Mustangs with a 14 point lead. They're looking to kind of cruise to the end of this game, not make mistakes. 
Ryan has it on the elbow. Now he gets it over to Noah. Right side, he dribbles to the middle. Now he dribbles, crosses over. Nice pick set by Ryan. Passes it off. This time, Tucker ends up with it. Some fancy dribbling there in front of Wallace. Pass inside to Ryan. They hand it off to Noah. Back to Ryan. Head fake over to Creighton. Creighton over to Noah. They're wasting some time here, getting some good looks. Nothing really easy. Nice pass over the top to Jason. He get, oh, I thought he was going to score that. Good foul. He got his money worth out of that foul, too. The foul on Bonds off his third. That'll send Jason to the line for another two shots. First one up and in. Nice stroke. Jason Goodhart, he's got four points now, and Rody's going to check back in for Tucker. Uh, they gain their size back here. So a uh, big lineup in there with Ryan, Jason, and Carson down low. Creighton also a big kid, and then Noah. You know when Noah's the small guy, it's a big lineup. Now Kellen comes in for Jason, so they gain back their balance. Jason hits their, the second free throw also. 53 to 37, 607 to go in the game. Both teams will be in the bonus with the next foul. Savari has it, passing over across. Ryan just about loses it, he's stuck in the corner. He gets it dribbled out though, finds Fleshman on the baseline, up and in. Fleshman finding a hole in that baseline defense of the Mustangs. 53-39, Kellen has it here on the left wing, right in front of us, now over to Carson. Carson over to Creighton in the corner. Bonds off on him, they move it back up to the top. Kellen has it, puts it over to Noah, and Coach Line giving him some instructions. Creighton has it up the three-point line, takes it baseline, stuck, trying to get through, a lot of arm movement. Somehow gets it over to Kellen. Kellen takes the shot just inside the three-point line. Kellen Eggleston up to 12 points on the night. He's got a hot hand. When he gets an open look, he's taking advantage. 55-39, five minutes to go in the game. Mustangs with their biggest lead of the game. At 16, they knock it out of bounds. Their defense has been outstanding tonight. Overton is, has found a couple seams and getting that ball down low to Fleshman, but other than that, they really haven't had a lot of open shots. Good looks at the bucket. Savari gets it over to Ryan. He kind of goes through, and now he tries to get it to Fleshman this time, but Creighton Line gets his hand to the passing lane and ends up getting the turnover. Pass over to Kellen, now up to Carson at the top of the key, drives down the lane, takes it up, dishes it over to Creighton. Man, it looked like he was going to shoot that thing, and then at the last second, he flipped it over to Creighton, who scores. He's got 13 now, Creighton does, and a great assist by Carson Rohde. Foul called on Creighton Line. I say he reached in on that one. I think that's probably a good call. And that'll send the... Overton player Slavari to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Noah comes out, Tucker in, keeping some fresh legs out there on defense. 4.30 to go, 57-39, Mustangs up 18. Largest lead of the game. And a great job here in this fourth quarter. Slavari makes his first free throw. Now we'll get another one. He's got double digits now at 10. Fleshman with 11, leads the scores for Overton. Second one, no good, rebounded by Jason, gets it up to Tucker, Tucker pushing right side over to Creighton. Creighton with bonds off on him, trying to get it low to Kellen. Good defense down there, hey, Shively. Tucker has it on the wing, trying to get it to Rody. nice pass to Rody. Rody looking to pass somewhere, can't find anybody, gets it back outside. Creighton, Tucker working the right side of that court outside that three point line. Trying to find it. Coach Line telling him, just be patient, it'll be there. A travel called. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Halfway through the fourth quarter. Bonsoff has it. Now Ryan. Try to pass it inside to Shively. Stolen again. So the Mustangs have taken away that baseline seam pass. 
Carson Rohde with a little reverse dribble behind the back. Gets it over to Creighton. Creighton inside to Kellen. Kellen has it right at the bucket. Misses. Kind of took a tough shot there, but he about made it. Creighton slaps it out of bounds. Try to get the ball up to Fleshman on the fast break. And a timeout taken. Full timeout by Darby Line. With 3.30 to go in the game, and the Mustangs up 57 to 40. Great effort put out here by the Mustangs. Like I said, I don't think you could say it enough. The, the unselfish play by the Mustangs tonight is a very positive thing. I want to say this in a, any kind of negative way. They've really done a great job of finding the open person. Doesn't matter what your number is, if you have the best chance to make the shot, you end up with the ball. And then Kellen and Creighton have done a great job of creating at the bucket. Carson's done a great job of posting up. Tucker's done a good job of keeping his hand in the passing lanes. Noah's done a good job of facilitating all that stuff and being annoying on the, the outside defense. And that's what you need from your point guards and your uh, shooting guards. You need somebody that can get their players so that they're uncomfortable all the time. You never want the other team to get in rhythm. And Swavari, he was in rhythm in the first half, but this second half, Noah's really stepped up the defense, and uh, they've really struggled to find a rhythm. Bonzoff also had a little rhythm in the third, but nothing here in the fourth. Swavari gets the inbound from Bonzoff, and a steal by Tucker Weitzel. Tucker brings it down, he's one on four, pulls it out, says, nope, I know those numbers don't look good. I'm not a selfish player. Let's get the ball out. Creighton has it on the left wing. Tucker open in the corner. Looked at him. Now he goes to him. Good job of finding him. Nice reverse pass to Kellen, but he has it poked away by Shively. The Mustangs ball underneath. 3.04 to go in the game. Rody's going to inbound it. Looks for a coach to call the play. Slaps the ball. They move. Get it over to Creighton. Nice pass back inside to Rody. He has it. Knocked away for a second. And it goes off of Shively out of bounds. <laughs> Rody, Rody knows it went off him. He looks, don't make that face, Carson. They'll know you're guilty. Get it into Tucker at the free throw line. High jump shot, no good. Rebound bombs off, pushes up to Fleshman. He gets it over to Ryan. Ryan going to take it all the way in. Shot up, no good. Good job of uh, defense between Kellen and Jason. And now Tucker has it on top. Nice shot inside. Pass inside to Rody. High lows it to Kellen, and Kellen couldn't quite finish. But Creighton ends up with it. More unselfish play by the Mustangs. Ryan finally called for the foul as he goes through Jason to try to get the ball on the inbound pass. Or not inbound pass, but inlet pass. 2.32 to go in the game. 57-40. Jason Goodhart to the line again, where he's got three makes from the line tonight. Kellen and Tucker take the block for the Mustangs. Shively, Ryan, Fleshman, and Bonzoff for Overton there, rounding out that free throw lane. Shot up, no good. Rebound by Tucker. He saves it into Creighton. Creighton to Kellen. Kellen waits for the head fake, and Bonzoff ends up with the steal. Almost too selfish there. Fouled by Carson. Ends up in Darby's lap. And that foul will go on Rody for sure. There's no question about that one. Shively will go to the line to shoot. It's like one on one. Next one, they'll be in the double bonus, though. They'll be shooting two from here on out. Misses. Oh, and he misses it. I don't even know who gets that. I guess we'll give it to Ryan. Uh, the rebound was tipped up, and it went in. I don't see that very often. 57-42. Doesn't really do a whole lot for Overton, but. Overton's gonna need some quick turnovers if they wanna turn this around. 57-42, two minutes and change to go here in the game. Noah passed it back to Creighton and almost hit him in the head. He wasn't quite ready for that. Noah dribbles it across, got Fleshman on him. Now they're in kind of the stall mode, gets it over to Creighton. We saw this in the girls' game, Overton doing this to SEM. Now, turnabout is fair play. 
Carson gets it over to Kellen in the corner and now passes it to Creighton in the middle, a head fake. Now back out to Carson. He head fakes and takes it in, dishes it over to Kellen. Minute 40 to go. They've wasted about 30 seconds so far here. And they look like the Grove Trotter dribble drill. Three pointer up by Kellen. He hit it! Kellen Eggleston with a three pointer. Timely three. He's got 15 now. 60 to 42, back up to an 18 point lead. And this is all but in the bag for the Mustangs. Stolen again by Creighton. With Storia tonight, that 1-3-1 one, one trap has just killed Overton, save for a couple good, really good passes to the baseline. And just a minute to go now in this game as the Mustangs are going to improve to 9-7. and seven. And we'll see where their district, a little foul there by Bonsoff. He helps Noah up off the court. Love to see that, love it. And that'll send Kel or Noah to the line for a one and one and that'll be Bonzov's fifth, fourth foul. But that'll help, uh, this win will help Mustangs with their points. Not a whole lot, because they're another T2 school, but a win is definitely a positive. And the JV squads for both teams will check in. And a big round of applause for everybody, especially uh, Carson Rohde at senior night. Bart Beatty getting set to check in for Noah after he does his free throws here. So we got Colt, Jace, Bart, and Gage into the game. And uh, the JV squad in. Looks like the starters for the JV squad for Overton. Noah hits his first free throw. Got five, six, seven, eight points now. Had a good game. Kind of one of those sneaky, quiet games where All right, Carson Rohde comes out. The yell of the seniors comes in and Ryan checks in. 55.2 seconds to go, second shot up. No good, rebound Gage. Gets it back outside to Noah, Noah over to Jace. Jace inside to Gage, Gage with the jump shot in the lane. He's fouled, he'll go to the line. And out comes Noah. Oh, he'll come out after the first shot. Bart was ready to check in. Noah waves him off. Ah, gotta wait for one. Wyatt Reebschlager catches that foul. And Gage hits the first one. Everybody happy now. You know you're gonna win. You get some points from your bench players. Great game for the Mustangs. They're up by 20 now. Gage misses the second. Rebound by Arbuthnot. Up, no good. Rebound by Overton. Noah Lees brings it up. And he carries the ball. That bucket will not count. Mustangs with a convincing win tonight over another class D2 rival here. Towns very close together. You know, for rivals towns though, they're really respectful of each other. You love to see that. I mean, it's just not the same with some of the other schools we play. And I'm just hats off to the Overton coaches and fans. They've been very respectful. Probably one of the best teams I've seen at home games so far. Just overall helping people up off the court. The fans have been kind. The fans clap for uh, SEM for senior night. I mean, it's just. Very positive atmosphere from both the SEM and the Overton fans. So, big shout out to both teams for, and both teams' fan bases for bringing that kind of energy to the last home game for SEM this season. Couldn't have been any better. 8.9 seconds to go. Lees misses the first free throw. Second shot up. Off the back of the rim, no good. And they hold on to the 20 point lead. Nope, rebound inside, shot up, no good. Rebound inside, shot up, no good. Two seconds, one, Arbuthnot gets it, and that's a game. Mustangs win by 20, 62 to 42. Thank you all for tuning in. We're gonna go to our final prayer. Both teams do. These teams with a lot of respect for each other.
Round of applause for both teams as Overton girls win tonight and the SEM Mustang boys team wins and uh, will be set for sub-district games on Tuesday for the girls and the boys schedule has yet to come out. And we'll let you know online what those brackets look like and uh, keep, keep up to date on the SEM Facebook page. Thanks again for helping with the Colton fundraiser and uh, the post-prom fundraiser. Everybody greatly appreciate your help and support. Thank you for all the likes and for viewing tonight. And so from Sumner, Nebraska, stay warm, everybody. Stay safe. We can't wait to see you again in the future. Um.